Okay. Let's see if this works on YouTube, shall we? We shall. Okay, so it's kind of working. Awesome. It was the Illuminati trying to stop us from spreading the truth. Should have had the tin full hats to stop the attack. Oh, you're right. I need to go get some tin foil. All right, we're going to go public with this and just go by the seat of our pants. All right. Cool. But I'm wearing shorts. I need to go get some tin foil. All right, we're going to go public with this and just go by the seat of our pants. All right. <coughs> cool. But I'm wearing shorts. I need to go get some tin foil. Oh, All right, we're going to go public with this and just go by the seat. Cool. So it's working. Um, you guys might be able to have access with it in just a couple seconds, so... I already have um, access to cool. it. So if you want to like open that up and just make sure everything's working, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the video we're going to go over. And we can start to <laughs> talk about what's going on here. So, uh, yeah, hello, everybody. This has taken way too long for this to work because um, YouTube hates us. They had that. So what ended up happening was that not too long ago, YouTube and Twitch had a hack. Well, Twitch specifically, and their the entire way their streaming service works was basically exposed, um, and so a lot of the ways that streaming services work because they all use the basically the same code for their encryption realized that oh crap this is exposed and they changed the way that it works to stream to those services. So now third party streaming services, as of a week ago, no longer work with YouTube. Besides a very few of them that manually put in the key. So things like Lightstream, which worked not too long ago, no longer work. And I'm used to Lightstream, so this whole time has been me figuring out how the heck to use it. It's been about 30 minutes, so there we go. Um, so I am here with a couple of people. Um, Hello. I think that it works and everything sounds good, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my stream manager here just to make sure that we're good to go. Um, I'm going to change the thumbnail real quick to something more <coughs> appropriate. Well, not more appropriate, just different. Make it a picture of someone with a tinfoil hat. Nah. Wa Washington reenactment and hard hard tack with 1918 Doughboy. It's the, I am still figuring this out. Episode four. It should be good. Now. I mean, everything. You should got the be Doughboy good. part, but not the 1918 Shut part. Shut up. That was from a while ago. I don't know why YouTube still saves that as my like <laughs> default. How long ago was that? That was like a Let year ago, it. dude. Yeah, that was a year ago. Yeah, <clears throat> it was a while ago. Let's see here. I mean, I guess this picture works. I just changed it. <clears throat> All right. Nixon was a high. Sorry. I don't know if that even came through. Well, it probably came through for me, but not for you guys. So. Washington State football team. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> Nothing. I just remembered that they're called Washington State football team. The Washington football team. Oh, Washington football team. Like, that's better. <laughs> the football team called the football team. All right, so I think we're good now. Um, just about. 
Alfonso should be coming soon. All right, cool. We've actually got, I can actually now view the way to watch chat and everything. So we're good on this front. Are you the person who put stuff in chat? No. No, is that a different Doughboy? Yep. How many, okay. Totally. All right, there's there's way too many Doughboys. <clears throat> I was joking, yes, it's me. Oh, no, sure, right, right, sure. We're just really waiting for Alfonso to get in here. Um, yeah. To be honest. I'm not too sure why there hasn't been a video announcement yet, so I'm going to go ahead and drop that in here. Um, because that's what I do. Um, because that... POV the stream. <laughs> Honestly, just watch the stream myself. The gang's all here. <laughs> the gang's all here. It's just SpongeBob with faces drawn on his three fingers. <laughs> <laughs> the gang's all here. Oh, bro. I remember when he had, when his only friends were a Dude, used tissue and a laced potato people chip. people in the Discord. What the hell? There's there that is? many people that care about my channel that much? That makes me happy. Mm. No, they're just bots. Okay, shut. You know what? Shut. <laughs> shut I'm just up. Joking. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave. <laughs> they're hey, just chat, bots. Oh, so you're a bot. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a figment of your imagination. <laughs> oh, hey, no. Yankee's here. Now I can't. Now I can't take my uh, schiz schizophrenia medication, or else you'll stop existing. No. Don't oh. take your pills, otherwise we'll cease to exist. I don't want you to cease existing. Also, for whatever reason, like, I usually average over 100 views a day. So, on October Damn. 11th, it went from 175 views to 46 views. I have no idea why that happened. Your, your stats separate. are just plain... Your stats are plain Geometry Dash or something. Yeah, it just takes this wild dip that goes back to normal. Just, just on the 11th. There's no reason for it. Also, YouTube my channel YouTube. just passed 78,000 views, so to people watching this who have been part of the channel for a while, I appreciate it. Um, we got This is going to be the 69th video, so this is the nice stream. Woo! Yay, boss! Uh, we're going to get started in just a minute, so for those of you who are here and watching... Um, <coughs> Hello, I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. This is going to be basically a very long stream, so I don't expect a ton of people watching this all at once. It's basically just going to be for after it's done for people to just kind of sit and listen to it. It's going to be about three hours long, so sit tight, grab some snacks. We might have a break in the middle. Um, and we're going to go over a lecture from the 60s that someone recorded uh, about the Illuminati. And it takes the reason why I'm doing this is not because it's your typical like modern one where they're trying to piece together all the modern stuff into it because that's just garbage anyway. It's going to be more focused on basically the uh, the 1700s, 1800s, all the way up to the 1960s when the thing was recorded. It's very interesting. I haven't listened to the whole thing. I did some preliminary research into the things that the dude says, but it's really not worth the effort because well. It's pretty stupid, and we'll explain why in just a second. Uh, I'm here with a few people. So currently we've got Frycor. Uh, he's a big collector up in somewhere. Um, I'm, I'm not going to dox somebody. Uh, then we got Doughboy, not not Doughboy 1918. Um, just discount Doughboy 1918. Uh, you can find <laughs> me in the great value section. <laughs> he's the great value, Doughboy 1918. <laughs> Um, we're going to have Alfonso, our favorite Chicagoan, join in, in just a few minutes. And then my diabetic friend who loves this type of stuff, who I know from my speech and debate days, is going to be joining us soon. Now, this is probably weird because I am doing this video after being completely absent for like six months, very nonchalantly. 
And I'm going to continue with that attitude. And no, I will not tell you why I haven't uploaded, because I don't even know. So, yeah, welcome back, everybody. I'm back. I'm not dead. Congratulations. You've investigated far enough. Uh, it took because us a he's long lazy. time. It, it took me a long time to get started because freaking nothing was working, but it actually worked out because I can't start until we get one more person in here because I promised Alfonso I wasn't going to start without him. So, yeah. Um, I'm actually not even going to explain who this person is who is doing this lecture until uh, Alfonso gets in here. So, you're welcome. You guys can just kind of sit and listen to us chat and freaking be stupid. Um, but yeah, it should be pretty fun. It should be a fun stream. It should be hella cool. I might actually take a break and have these idiots talk amongst themselves because I might get some scotch if this thing is going to drain my brain anymore. So, hey, I resent that. Yeah, you, you, I, you can resent all you want. You're resenting the truth. That's, that's you sit it. upon a throne of lies. Oh, damn. I can't escape from that one. But yeah, we're literally just waiting for the Chicagoan to dodge bullets out of the shower and get in here. He's been in the shower for 20 minutes. That's nothing. I've gone for two hours. That's that's gay, dude. That's that's hella gay. If you take a sh if your showers take more than five minutes, you're stupid. I know. I don't think I've. I, I think I rarely ever take a shower that's longer than like ten minutes, let alone five. I thought you you know? I thought you were about to say you rarely ever take a shower. <laughs> well, I mean, you can uh, you can take a shower that's less than ten minutes if you don't take a shower. Fair enough. <laughs> also, I'm not too sure why Yankee said sorry for jumping in chat and engaging. I don't really care. He's not being cringe. I mean, it's not I it's not Hans. So, <laughs> speaking of which, I haven't talked to Hans since um, I last uploaded a video. So, like, this is going to be, like, if he's still alive, this will be, like, the first sign of life from my end. <laughs> which is weird. Anyway. I already know I'm going to look back on this video and listen to my voice and cringe. Dude, I just already dude, know. That's just how it goes. That's just how it be sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's the point, dude. You live and grow, and you look back on yourself, and you cringe. If you don't do that, what's the point in life? You look back and just think, look at that tard. Look at that tard. <laughs> <laughs> it is 1.40 in the a.m. p.m. Ghost Army, I am sorry you live in the wrong area of the world. But uh, here in the United States, we actually live the correct cycle of the day. So sucks to suck, nerd. Yeah, imagine imagine living in a different time zone than Eastern Standard, Central Time, um, Mountain Time, or Pacific Time. Anyone who lives outside of those time zones is just a freaking nerd. It's just a dweeb, right? Especially the Europeans. It's Europeans, Asians, all of them. Aussies, all, especially the Aussies, the hillbilly British people. <laughs> hillbilly British people. Yeah, that's what they are. They're all criminals. <clears throat> you know what? Fair enough. They they even have bootleg cowboy hats. They're literally criminals. Yeah, bootleg cowboy hats with corks on them. Yeah. They're just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's upside down. They drive on the left side of the... Like, not the... Yeah, they drive on the left side of the road. Who does that? Freaking dumb people, like the British and Aussies. Bro, I just I, lost. I just lost all three of the people that are that watch my channel that are in Britain and Australia. You mean all zero people? Because nobody lives there. Yeah, no one lives I in speak. Australia, and no one willingly lives in Britain. Honestly. Oh, I just lost a viewer for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> they went from three to two. They're like, "Oh God, no!" He's found me. I need he, to escape. No, he, I, you said that people don't exist in Australia, and he's an Australian, and he just faded out of existence because you said that. He's like, he, just, ah. he no longer exists after you said it. You said it and just faded away. <laughs> just Thanos snapped out of exactly. existence. Thanos snapped him because of what you said. Honestly, we're just waiting for Alfonso to jump in here. And he's taken forever. The hell. From dust you came into dust you shall return. Honestly. <laughs> Just fades out of existence. <clears throat> Bro, 
if you think Australians are just bootleg, um, what's it called, Brits? New Zealanders are bootleg Aussies. How do you bootleg a bootleg? Have you ever watched Chinese ripoffs of American films? I don't even want to. That's a I good haven't, point. And I don't want... To. I haven't, and I want to keep it that way. Good. Good idea. I, I'm honestly just about to start this and just get the whole thing going without Alfonso because he wanted to take an hour-long shower. It's actually been almost 30 minutes. How long do your showers take? God damn. He's got to be taking a dump or something. Yeah, in the shower. This is... <laughs> no. Oh, I mean, if you pee in the shower, at least it goes down the drain. Hey, you know what they say? One in five people poop in the shower. One in five? One in five, which means one person in this group chat poops in the shower. <laughs> Shh. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> So it's not me. Chat. It's not you. I Chat. don't think it's Frycor. And I Chat. doubt I doubt it's the diabetic. So the only other person in this group chat who it could be is Alfonso. Oh yeah, totally. Plus he lives in Chicago. No wonder he shits in the shower. I would too if I lived in that city. If I'm being honest. <laughs> you lost a you lost a viewer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got the anti-furry man. Perfect. He'll keep the furries away. Let's go. We got the exterminator. <laughs> hey, see that? Hey, chat. See that picture of the Germans <laughs> standing on top of that tank? Yeah, that's us. That's us taking a picture with your mom. Yeah, no, that's that's how we look when you say. That you you think that the Illuminati caused the French Revolution? That's that's how we that that's how we look. We just look at you, and then run you through with a bayonet because you obviously don't read. Don't even give them the the uh, what's it called? Don't even give them. Use your words. Use your uh, words. You can do it. I believe in you. Um, I I. Can... <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, I get it. Uh, you just you just got you just got small brain, smooth. My bro, my head smoother than a stall helm. Smoother than a stall helm? Yep, fresh out the factory. Like I'm built stupid. I shouldn't even exist. No! Oh, what? No! What happened? I just so heard yelling. So some deodorant fell. So some deodorant on my desk fell. It slid off my keyboard and hit the plate and knocked my pizza onto my haversack. Oh, that you, you spilled your pizza? No. Some deodorant fell. It slid off my keyboard. I tried to catch it. It fell on my plate and not my pizza onto my haversack. Yeah, you spilled your pizza onto your haversack. Yeah. Now I got like a tiny grease stain on my haversack. That's great. <laughs> All right. You know what? I've given up waiting for waiting for Alfonso. It has been 30 An minutes hour. since he went to go take a shower. And honestly, I'm just kind of tired of waiting. So... Let's get into it. All right, so this video is an old recording from an LP. It was a three LP record set um, that was recorded in 1967. It was recorded by Myron Fagan. Now, it's funny because I think Fagan, was it Fagan or was it Sykes that was the Jew in Oliver Twist? <laughs> no, this is important. This is important because the dude here is an anti-Semite. So it's going to be ironic. My, my search history today is freaking weird because I was trying to refresh my memory on the stuff that this thing co covers. So there's a lot of stuff like 
French Revolution caused by Illuminati. Just trying to figure out where that theory comes from. And so the FBI agents watching my search history just sitting there like, what the fuck? This and is why now, I got to use And now I have the search history of Oliver Twist Fagan Jew. <laughs> hey, Alfonso's out the shower. Finally, god damn. Now he's, he's gonna got now he's gonna dry. Now. It's gonna take him another hour. Too much information, my guy. All right, yeah, so that's that's an important thing. So, anyway, so it's like a it's like a surname that's very much associated with Jews. And that's important because this dude is an anti-Semite. So, Myron Fagan was born in 1887. He was a writer, a producer, a director, and I'm literally just reading this from Wikipedia, so take that what you will. Um, he was one of the main people causing the Red Scare in the 40s and the 50s, but the big thing was that he was very, very much so against um, the League of Nations and the United Nations and called it a communist plot to take over the world and put forward a one-world order by the globalists. So, yeah. Um, and a lot of this actually... So that kind of started with that whole thing, with, with him doing that down. Um, so part what really kind of set him up to be radicalized like that is he was convinced in 1945 that... Well, he claimed in 1945 that he saw secret documents of the meetings in Yalta um, that sh proved that Roosevelt uh, basically was a supporter of the Soviets and no. gave them a bunch of stuff. Like, first of all, oh my gosh, I'm so surprised that he's supporting an ally. Uh, second of all, um, he, he doesn't even, like, give any proof of that. He's just like, it proves, he's just saying, I saw letters once, and he's, he, his whole thing was like, his whole thing is like the secret documents show that Joseph Stalin and Franklin Roosevelt and Churchill plotted to split up Europe. And it's like, oh my God, what a breakthrough. Yes, they did. That was the point of the Yalta meetings was to decide who gets what after Germany falls. Um, and he basically got so enthralled with that. He was writing plays about it and no one wanted to pick up his plays because they were honestly just ridiculous. And so he got so upset with that, he called it a red conspiracy, a communist conspiracy that he wasn't allowed to show his plays and said that Hollywood was filled with communists because he wasn't being successful. Um, and so finally he got his brother to help produce it. Um, and then he wrote a book called These Paradise two years later or like a play. And basically it's basically a similar plot, but showing the United Nations as a communist plot for one world government. Um, and that met with a lot of opposition because uh, the United Nations is famously something that the United States and Britain created to stop the Soviet Union. So that's interesting. Um, and yeah, he's he just a wild dude. And then between 1967 and 1968, he basically recorded a set of three spoken word LP records called the Illuminati and the Council on Foreign Relations. Um, and it it basically talks about the most common branch of the Illuminati that people most likely point towards are in conspiracy theories, which is the Bavarian Illuminati, which was disbanded in 1880-something, 1885, I think. Um, and basically talking about how it's like a Luciferian conspiracy directed by the Jewish Rothschild family. And it basically disappeared into obscurity, and there's like a video on YouTube about it. So that's the rundown. That's That's... That's a too long, didn't read version of it. So for those of you who are buckled up and ready for a three hour plus long stream where we're going to listen to this LP record set on YouTube and break it down and basically talk about how garbage it is. I am excited to do this. I've been looking forward to do this, and I'm glad I can do it with people that share my interest in this stuff. So feel free to say whatever you like about this in the chat and we'll just be chatting it up here i say three hours plus the thing is two and a half hours long i haven't listened to whole the whole thing and there's a lot of stuff we're going to derail and talk about the stuff and um all that good stuff so buckle up and let's get started uh we're, we're okay. expecting two more people to join alfonso who once he decides to stop being gay and join the vc and my diabetic friend who is planning to join after he finishes taking his dogs 
for a walk. And so, speak of the devil, it is Alfonso himself, the Chicagoan. Thank God. So real, so real quick, I was reading through this thing in some in my one of the dis my Discord servers, and this dude said I told my barber just to trim the sides a little bit, and he makes me bald on the sides. <laughs> oh God. All right. Well, uh, Alfonso, you are muted. You missed the too long, didn't read of who this guy is. Uh, basically, he's an anti-Semite Illuminati conspiracy theorist oh. who be was made bitter by no, 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 no. not being successful no, in Hollywood. I heard it. I heard, so. it. No, I heard, it. I heard <laughs> it. I was watching Good. the stream. I was Good. Crying. You were watch oh, okay, that's that's disturbing. All right. Here we go. <coughs> the question of how and why the United Nations... Let me know if you guys can hear this properly. And if you can't, I mean, especially with the stream, I'm going to need some help with this. So people in the stream, let me know if you can't hear it. I could hear it. Cool. Nations is the crux of the great conspiracy to destroy the sovereignty of the United States and the enslavement of the American people within a UN one world dictatorship is a complete and unknown mystery to the vast majority of the American people. The reason for this unawareness of the frightening danger to our country and to the entire free world is simple. The masterminds behind this great conspiracy have absolute control of all of our mass communications media, especially television, the radio, the press, and Hollywood. So, I know that we literally just started, but I just kind of want to say, like, this dude died five years after this. He's 79 when he's recording this. And he's saying all this stuff, like, about Hollywood oh, wow, and all that bro. because he's bitter of his failures. And it's like, if they had that much control, how the heck were you allowed to record this and get this spread around? I don't know. It's like one of those big failing points of, like, their... Wait, hold on. Where was this dude? No. This dude is American. This reminds me of... Oh, but, like, like, city, like, region. I don't know. This reminds me of Arnim Zola from uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. Yeah. It reminds me of that. Yeah, F feel free to talk <laughs> over the video itself. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just because, yeah. like... Just because I don't want this to just be like a freaking watch party where all it is is the, uh, where all it is. Just is us the, listening. Exactly. That's the last thing I want to do. So feel free to just, just talk recording. over recording. <laughs> all right. But yes, like Arnim Zola. We all know that our state has planted us all oh, yeah, I agree. and the White House. In the building that you are that standing in right, right now. Mr. And Rogers the power to manage the news. blow up in about five tell seconds. Tell us not the truth, it, but what they want us to believe. Goodbye. They have seized that power on from orders from their masters of the great conspiracy. And the objective is to brainwash the people into accepting oh, okay. the phony peace say, bait. It sounds like a really transform Chicago the thing United States into an enslaved unit you not being successful. of the United like, ah, Nations okay, One World down. Government. The whole party with me. First of all, bear in mind that the so-called UN police action in Korea, fought by the United States, in which 150,000 of our sons were so, murdered and maimed, was part of the plot. It's, it's Just as the undeclared hear, by Congress war in Vietnam, in which our sons uh, are dying, is part of the plot. To hear him talk Just about, as like, the plot the against war, Rhodesia like, and South Africa, um, in which our and with all that other stuff going on, because if you listen to him, he never uses any definites. It's all like these yeah. super like vague buzzwords about what most of these types of people do, like the great conspiracy, all these very vague terms, because all they've done is they've basically thrown bones on the ground and then connected the dots between them to make a unicorn and said, oh, my God, it's 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 the Illuminati. When in reality, it's just a bunch of stuff that's happened throughout history. And if you actually take some time to read about it and understand the underlying factors behind them, it makes sense. And it isn't just some great one world government conspiracy. Because there were far more opportune moments for that to happen before the 60s. That if there was a great conspiracy to do it, it would have already happened. But yeah. I digress. That's one of the problems with... These whole things, but yeah, keep a, keep your ear out. And I feel like people in general. Maybe it's like trying to connect a bunch of different pieces right. from multiple different puzzles. Yep. So it's it's yeah. definitely one of the. Just keep your ears out and open for like their very vague stuff, like great conspiracy. Him using they a lot to refer to them. Um, stuff like you know, 
uh, the great plot because they don't have names for it because it doesn't exist. Our sons will be dying is part Precisely. of the UN plot. However, the vitally like important the thing for all Americans, the, all you mothers plot. of the boys who died in Korea and are now dying in Vietnam, to know is that Wait, our so-called leaders in Washington, 67. whom we elected uh, to safeguard our right. nation and our Constitution, mm -hmm. are the betrayers, and that behind them are a comparatively small group of men whose sole objective so mayor, is to enslave the whole world of humanity in their satanic plot of one world government. Also, Now, in order to give you a very so clear picture of this that. satanic plot, later. <laughs> I will go back to its beginning, clear back right. in the middle of the 18th century, and name yeah, the men who put that right. plot into right. action, Satanic. and then to bring make you it sound down to the evil. present, yep. today's status of that plot. Now, as a matter of further intelligence, a term used I feel like by this the guy FBI, was to be global, but he let said. me clarify the meaning of the expression, he they is use a, a bunch liberal. of big words. The yeah, enemy, meaning the one world smart. conspirators, have seized upon that yeah. word liberal he, he sounds like Gerbil, as a cover up for their activities. <laughs> it sounds also, so innocent also, and so humanitarian to be liberal. He, we'll make sure that the person who. If you know who this person is and know that he was one of the main proponents to push the Red Scare, which was a very anti leftist um, movement, and the fact that he's also saying, like, all liberals are just pawns for the illuminati is basically the basically saying that conservatives are the opposite of that so you can kind of start to see how this isn't him pushing forward some great truth he uncovered that's trying to get suppressed this is him connecting dots to try to back up his own personal beliefs and not him trying to actually uncover what actually has happened it's him taking events and connecting them in a way that that proves his beliefs not him forming his beliefs on actual truths uh like he wants you to believe which is why he uses big words a lack of sourcing and vague connections who calls himself a liberal or is described as a liberal is not in truth a red now then this satanic Remember, plot liberal bad was launched back in the 1760s <laughs> when it first came into existence under the name of the Illuminati. This Illuminati, Illuminati was confirmed. organized by one Adam Weishaupt, mm -hmm. born a Jew, mm -hmm. who was converted to Catholicism and became a Catholic oh, priest. Yeah. And then, I'm here for. at the behest of the then newly organized House of Rothschild, and defected and organized the Illuminati. The oh, Naturally, yeah. the Rothschilds financed that operation. And every war since then, beginning with the French Revolution, every single has war. been promoted by the Illuminati, operating under various names and guises. I say under various names and guises, because after the Illuminati was exposed and became too notorious, Weishaupt and his co-conspirators began to operate under various other names. He's going to get more into in the this, United so States, immediately after World this, War I, the, uh, they set up what they called down. the Council on All Foreign right. Relations, commonly referred right. to as the CFR. And this CFR is actually the Illuminati in the United States. And its hierarchy, the masterminds in control of the CFR, to a very great extent, are the descendants of the original Illuminati conspirators. He doesn't bring up any sources but for that. to conceal that fact, most of them changed their original family names to American-sounding names. For example, <laughs> the true name of to the Dillons, that were related, Clarence changed, and Douglas they Dillon, their names, so there's no one way for me secretary to of the U.S. Trust Treasury me, bro, Department, <laughs> is Lepowski. I'll you come got back my to word all on this it. later. Well, the German there is a similar is establishment of the Illuminati in England, operating under the name of the British Institute of International Affairs. There are similar secret Illuminati no, organizations in France, on on Germany, and other it. nations, <laughs> operating <laughs> under different oh, names. Leave it. Read the title. All We're these debunking. organizations, including the CFR, yeah. 
continuously set up yeah. numerous it's, subsidiary it's or front organizations For being sarcastic. that are infiltrated into every phase of the various nations' affairs. But at all times, the operations of these organizations were and are masterminded and controlled by the internationalist bankers who in turn were and are controlled by the Rothschilds. The details of how they accomplished the setting up of the CFR in the United States, as also in the other nations, are far too voluminous to be described in this dissertation. But you can find it complete in news bulletin number 122. If I don't hear Hail Hydra in this, I'm going to be mad. is spawn of the Illuminati. You could probably get news bulletin number 123 entitled CFR Completely Unmasked as Illuminati. Both are published by the Cinema Educational Guild, Post Office Box, Shield has been um, hacked. They've been infiltrated by Hydra agents. You can get them for 50 cents per copy by um, writing to that address. Those we need to take out Nick Fury. Reveal the names of so, the original. What's funny we is need he, Captain he's America. really specific when he sources it. But if you actually look at it, and I kind of did some digging into this, they hardly support his claims at all. He says, hey, look at this. You can get these sources this way by going here and here and here. But then you actually look into it, and you actually take the time to do it. And one, you either A, find that it doesn't actually exist, or B, you find that the thing that he's trying to say it supports his claim is that there's an article writing about a name change, or there's an article writing about something super simple. And he takes that and draws it into a huge deal, like, oh, it says here that this family name changed to this family name, and this old family name is the exact same name. It's like, oh, it's Smith. It used to be Smith, and that's the same last name this one dude had who was part of the Illuminati, which means that they're related, and they changed the name to hide it, which is dumb. And a lot of the names, so remember how he says Bavarian branch of the Illuminati? During World War II, a lot of German families who were very um, prominent changed their last names in order to hide from anti-German persecution during World War II. So to suddenly see this large group of powerful families change their names to American names, and those German names are similar to the ones that were connected to the old like Illuminati group in Bavaria that was disbanded after the Bavarian government went after them, um, that's not uncommon. Those are very common names. They changed them to American names to avoid persecution, and because they were powerful families, they got into politics. That's not some great conspiracy. That's a coincidence. <laughs> and that's, and that, what, that's that, what these just not on the of the politics. Huh? I mean, it happened. It happened all across the board with anything right. because of the anti-American, uh, sorry, not anti-American, anti-German sentiment right. in the United States at the time. You had lots of like uh, lots of German families just change their last name because they wanted to sound more American. Right. They and wanted to distance and, themselves. And a lot of these articles that he's trying to like show as proof, like these people change their names and all that. I mean, they're literally just mentioning like name changes, but he gets super specific with everything, so it like gives him credibility. And it's 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 one of those weird tactics of like trying to get you to believe his crackpot theory. Founders of crackpot. the Illuminati yeah. and the Americanized names of their descendants in the present CFR. Now know, I'll go back the to the activities, activities of the original well. Illuminati conspiracy. Because I'm like twelve. As revealed in news bulletin number one twenty two, one branch of the Rothschild family had financed Napoleon. <laughs> Another branch of the Rothschilds, both branches, the real masterminds of the Illuminati, financed <laughs> Britain, Germany, and the other nations Notice in the Napoleonic the Wars. Immediately after the Napoleonic See? Wars, well, the Illuminati well, assumed you know. <laughs> that all the nations so were so desperate and so weary of war that they'd be glad for any solution. Have a source that so the Rothschild like Stooges get super set up what they call the Congress in Vienna. Huge claim with and no at source. that meeting, it's really they tried to, to create the first League of Nations, their first attempted one world government. On the theory that all the crowned heads of the European governments were so deeply in debt to them that they would willingly or unwillingly serve as their stooges. But the stooges. Tsar of Russia <laughs> caught the stench of the plot okay, this and is completely really torpedoed stupid. it. Oh the enraged Nathan Rothschild, <laughs> then the head of that dynasty, Dynasty. Vowed that someday Dynasty. he or his descendants would destroy the Tsar and his entire family. 
<laughs> and his descendants did accomplish that very threat in 1917. Okay, let's let's At talk this about this. So I don't know if you guys know exactly what he mentioned there. So the first League of Nations he mentions is the Congress of Vienna. I have a video about the Congress of Vienna, which you can watch on my YouTube channel with Lighting the Powder Cake, which will continue, I promise. Stop asking me. So the, like the Congress of Vienna was basically how to divide that's Europe true, by after, my after Napoleon fell. Um, it was actually interrupted by Napoleon's return to Europe, but it was basically this Congress of like, hey, what are we going to do to figure out Europe? It wasn't a thing of like, hey, let's set up a League of Nations type deal. It was, so what's next? The League of Nations, he mentions, is the holy alliance between Prussia, Austria, and Russia. They agreed to create a holy alliance to keep the peace in Europe and to push down revolts against the monarchies. But yet in this video, he mentions the Tsar of Russia was not on board with it. But the Tsar of Russia is the one who actually pushed the idea and pushed forward with it. The person who organized the, the Congress of Vienna was um, an Austrian. Gosh, dang it, I forget his name. Let me look it up. Um, he's a huge um, proponent of like European politics for the first half of the... Uh, oh, Metternich. That's it. He's a huge proponent of European politics up until like when he dies in the 1840s, I believe, or when he was basically deposed in the 1840s. Um, and he basically was this person who organized the Congress, this League of Nations. He had no connection with Britain or France, who, according to this guy, are the people funded by the Rothschilds to create it. So basically, by doing some basic research into how the Congress of Vienna formed, why it was formed, the outcome of it, you instantly have this whole thing debunked. But he's banking on the idea that you'll believe him and give him credibility for what he's saying because he got super specific with sources about changes in family names from after, from during World War II when people were doing that in mass to escape anti-German sentiment within the United States. So it's one of those like weird things that people try to do to make you believe them. And it's actually a great case study for when you're looking into something to always make sure you don't fall for that trap because I've been victim of it. But yeah, that's actually what the Congress of Vienna was. It's not some great plot to like create a League of Nations. It actually created an alliance to keep the peace in Europe, which was successful up until like the 1830s to 1840s, um, up when that alliance fell apart after the Crimean, after like the revolutions of 1848. Sorry, the alliance between Austria and Russia fell apart in 1848 and during the Crimean War. Um, so he mentions that the Tsar was on board. He actually is the guy who pushed for it. So it immediately just kind of debunks everything. So it automatically falls apart. But it's important to understand that his belief is that the Congress of Vienna was to create a League of Nations and that the Tsar opposed it. Because it pushes into his whole plot about the communists being a huge proponent of it. Because who killed the Tsar? The communists. So obviously they're the Illuminati punishing the Tsar for not playing ball 100 years earlier. So very interesting stuff. <laughs> point, bear in mind that the Illuminati was not set up to operate on a short-range basis. Normally, a conspirator of any type enters into a conspiracy with the expectation of achieving his objective during his own lifetime. But that was not the case with the Illuminati. True, they hoped to accomplish their objective during their lifetime. But, paraphrasing, the show must go on, the Illuminati operates on the very long range basis. Whether it will take scores of years or even centuries, they have dedicated their descendants to keep the plot boiling until they hope the conspiracy is achieved. Which is a huge proponent now let's of go the back Illuminati to the birth of the Illuminati. The thing that people can say, well, Adam Weishaupt was yet? a Jesuit trained professor of canon because, law oh, it's teaching in Ingolstadt is... University when he defected from Christianity to embrace the Luciferian conspiracy. It was in 1770 that the professional moneylenders, the then recently organized House of Rothschild, retained him to revise and modernize the age-old protocols of Zionism, which from the outset was designed to give the synagogue of Satan, so named by Jesus Christ, <laughs> ultimate world domination, so they could impose synagogue. the Luciferian <laughs> the ideology upon what would remain of the human race 
after the final social cataclysm <laughs> by use of satanic despotism. Uh, no Weishaupt uh, completed uh, his task May 1st, 1776. Now you know why May 1 is the great day with all communist nations to this very day. Which it isn't. That was the day, May 1, 1776, that Weishaupt completed his plan and officially organized the Illuminati to put the Man, plan into execution. <laughs> yeah. That plan required the destruction of all existing governments and religions. That objective was to be reached by dividing the masses of people whom he, Weishaupt, termed Goyim, or human cattle, <laughs> into opposing camps Isn't Goyim like a in ever-increasing numbers on political, social, economic, and other issues. <laughs> The very conditions oh, we have chain. in our country today. <laughs> this guy's the opposing a sides were then to be armed and incidents <laughs> provided, which would cause them to fight and weaken themselves <laughs> and gradually destroy <laughs> national OG governments and religious institutions. Again, I say, the very conditions in the world today. And at this point, let me stress a prime feature of the Illuminati plans. When and if their blueprint for world control, the protocols of the elders of Zion, is discovered and exposed, they would wipe all the Jews off the face of the earth in order to divert suspicions from themselves. If you think this is far-fetched, bear in mind that they permitted Hitler a liberal socialist Why is himself everyone loved the who was financed Jews. by Krupp Kennedy, the Warburgs, and the Rothschilds to incinerate six hundred thousand Principal Krupp from Jews. Captain Underpants? No way! So, Alright, let's just break down the past couple minutes. Weishaupt was of the belief that the religious institutions were too powerful and that monarchies were bad. That was his beliefs. We actually have his writings that have survived centuries. He was like, oh, yeah, religious institutions, they're too powerful. We need to get people away from that. He was a big proponent. He's like, if you go to r slash atheism on Reddit, it's basically a bunch of people who share beliefs of, we of Weishaupt. Basically, the whole idea that religion is so bad, no one should ever believe it, and ever all religion is a cult. That was Weishaupt's belief. Um, apparently, the Catholic Church burned him, which isn't a surprise. Uh, and he also believed that monarchies were bad. What a weird belief. So. Interesting. But the whole thing, like, it was satanic. He was with the Rothschild. He wasn't. He got banned in Bavaria because people were scared of his anti-monarchy beliefs and his beliefs against banking institutions. He was very anti-banks and centralization and all that good stuff. So that's one thing he got wrong. The other thing is that Hitler was a reactionary. Hitler wasn't a revolutionary. He wasn't a uh, socialist. Um, he was... A reactionary who despised socialists, who despised communism, who despised capitalism. He was not a leftist. Um, he was not funded by Krupp. Krupp is a military arms manufacturing ma manufacturer. And they supported his will willingness to go to war because war means Krupp makes a lot of money. So that is also wrong. And a couple other people that he oh, mentioned yeah. that funded him. Um, one person that he doesn't mention funded, I don't think he mentions him, is Ford. Henry Ford was a huge funder of, of Hitler and a huge anti-Semite. Ford actually promoted square dancing as a counter to jazz music because he saw jazz music as the Jewish plot to destroy society, and he thought that uh, promoting square dancing would um, counteract jazz. So there's a little... Oh, dude, this is why blues are so much better than jazz. <laughs> blues and jazz are a Jewish I'm... conspiracy to break down society. What? No, 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 no. Blues is a Chicagoan thing, so we ain't Jewish at all. We hate Jews. Now, Jews just here. why yeah. did the conspirators <laughs> choose the word you, Illuminati you for their satanic you organization? Weishaupt this himself said that the word is derived from religion? Lucifer and means holders of the light. Using the lie that his care. objective was to bring about a one-world government to enable those with mental ability to govern the world and prevent all wars in the future. In short, 
using the word peace on earth as his bait, exactly as that same bait, peace, was used by the 1945 conspirators to force the United Nations on us, Weishaupt, financed, I repeat, by the Rothschilds, <laughs> recruited some 2,000 paid followers. These included the most intelligent men in the fields of arts and letters, that was the education, of who were the sciences, Bavarian, finance, uh, and industry. He then established lodges of the Grand oh. Orient, Masonic That's lodges, here. to be their secret headquarters. And I again repeat that in all of this, he was acting under orders from the House of Rothschild. The main features of the Weishaupt plan of operation required his Illuminati to do the following things to help them to accomplish their purpose. Number one, use monetary and sex bribery to obtain control of Why men that, already in so high places in the various levels of all governments and other fields of endeavor. Yeah. Once influential persons had fallen for the lies, deceits, and temptations of the illusion of all God, they were to be held in bondage by application of political and other forms of blackmail, threats of financial ruin, public exposure and physical harm, even death, to themselves and loved members of their families. Do you realize how many present top officials in our federal government in Washington are controlled in just that way by the CFR? Do you realize how many homosexuals in our State Department, the Pentagon, all federal agencies, even the in the White House, are controlled that way? <laughs> Number two, Illuminati and the faculties of colleges and universities bring up a good point, were though. to cultivate students possessing exceptional mental ability lobbyists, belonging to, to well-bred families Illuminati. with international leanings and recommend them for special training in internationalism. Yeah, if you have Such any uh, training, you're going to get blackmailed. This is just bottom line. <laughs> the home of sexuals. <laughs> was oh, to yeah, be provided <laughs> by granting scholarships to those selected by the Illuminists. I've never been more scared that of a house. That gives you an idea life. what a Rhodes Scholarship means. <laughs> it means indoctrination into accepting the idea that only a one world government can put an end to recurring wars and strife. That's how the United Nations was sold to the American people. One of the most notable Rhodes Scholars we have in our country is Senator William J. Fulbright, sometimes referred to as Half-Bright. His entire <laughs> voting roasted. record spells Illuminati. How will he ever oh! Oh! From such scholars <laughs> He's were to be first bro. persuaded and then convinced that men of special talent and brains well, have the right thing. to rule those less gifted on the ground that the masses don't know what is best for them physically, mentally, and spiritually. In addition to the Rhodes and similar scholarships, today there are three special Illuminati schools located in Gordonstown in Scotland, Salem in Germany, and Anavrita in Greece. Oh, yeah, where's These you, three where's you are graduate? known oh, the ones, University of but there are others that are kept undercover. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Prince Philip, the husband Never of Britain's of Queen huh? Elizabeth, well, well, was educated well, at Gordonstown no, I don't think at the instigation of Lord Louis Mountbatten, his uncle, a Rothschild relative, who became Britain's admiral of the <laughs> oh, yeah, fleet after World like War II ended. Number three. <laughs> All influential people trapped Bro. into coming under the control he, of the Illuminati. Who is this He got a wax. Well, the students who had been specially educated and trained were to be used as agents and Barber placed behind the scenes of all governments as experts and specialists. That's lawsuit worthy. So they would advise <laughs> the top executives to adopt policies which would, in the long Let's run, my coach, serve the secret plans of the Illuminati One World Conspiracy and bring about the destruction of the governments and religions they were elected or appointed to serve. Do you know how many such men 
operate in our government at this very time? Rusk, McNamara, <laughs> Hubert Humphrey, Fulbright. Now he just starts Kiko. naming names. And go on and on and See, on. He's just like, these people Number are in four. the Illuminati. He really Don't has the most vital directive bro. in Weishaupt's plan just was to obtain it. absolute control of the press. At that time, the only mass communications media Nothing to distribute information to the public to the so that all news and information Nothing could be bad slandered ever happens to the so Kennedys. that the masses could be convinced that a one-world government is the only solution to our many and varied problems. Now do you know who owns and controls our mass communications media? I have no idea. I'll tell you, practically oh, all you. the movie lots in Hollywood is owned oh, okay, by the awesome. Laymans, Thanks. Kuhn Loeb and Company, Goldman Sachs, and other internationalist bankers. So, real quick, he's like, all the major Hollywood lots, all the major companies are owned by individual bigger companies. This is proof there's a conspiracy. <laughs> I mean, all these, isn't that just all, how all these huge companies are owned by larger companies? Proof that there's a globalist conspiracy. And Lucasfilm like, is owned by Disney. Like, That's like, proof. Like, look, if he if he was like, all of these Hollywood companies are owned by one person, and all of these Hollywood companies actually control ninety percent of the media you hear, then he'd have a point. But he's like seventy five percent of the major Hollywood. Like, not even all the major Hollywood ones. 75% of them are owned by a ton of different big companies. There's no there's no argument. It's just that's how things work, dude. I'm sorry they didn't allow your little their little your little play to get put forward. But, oh, my God. Oh, calls people uh, out, refuses to elaborate. Okay, no, this this is, comes this up is with, like oil industry with Rockefeller. Sigma male grind set. And all, his whole thing is just Lucifer is in control of everything and it's the Jews. It's the juice. That's his, that's his whole thing. All the it's national the radio and TV channels in the nation are owned same and controlled by guy. those same internationalist bankers. The same is true of every chain of metropolitan newspapers and magazines. Neopolitan, also of the, the press ice wire cream? services, such as Associated Whoa. Press, United oh. Press International, etc. The supposed heads of all those media are merely the fronts for the internationalist bankers who in turn compose the hierarchy of the CFR, today's Illuminati in America. Now can you understand why the Pentagon's press agent Sylvester so brazenly <laughs> proclaimed that the government so, has a right to lie to the bro. people? <laughs> I don't follow what you. What he really oh, meant was that our CFR controlled so, government Grandpa, I think you need your medications. And be believed this by the brainwashed American people. Coming up with false and let's again go back to like, the first days of the you Illuminati. Understand? And we're just because Britain like, and no. France were the two greatest world powers in the late years of the 18th century, Grandpa, Weishaupt we need to get you your demand ordered medication. the Illuminati okay. to foment the colonial wars, including mm. our Revolutionary War, to weaken the British Empire and organize no, the French the Revolution to destroy oh, yeah. the French Empire. He scheduled now, the it? French Revolution to start in 1789. However, in 1784, a Schedule true act of God placed the Bavarian government in possession of evidence which hmm. proved the existence of the Illuminati. And that evidence could have saved France if they, the French government, hadn't refused to believe it. Here is how that act of God happened. It was in 1874 that Weishaupt issued his orders for the French Revolution. A German writer named Zwack put it into book Zwack? form. It contained Zwack? the entire Illuminati story and Weishaupt's plans. A copy of this book was sent to the Illuminists in France, headed by Robespierre, whom Weishaupt had delegated to foment the French Revolution. Swap. Swap. The courier was struck and killed by lightning as he rode through Ralliston on his way from Frankfurt to Paris. Of course, it had to be bad. The police found the subversive documents on his body and point. turned them over to the proper authorities. 
After careful study of the plot, the Bavarian government ordered the police to raid Weishaupt's newly organized lodges of the Grand Orient and the homes of his most influential associates. All additional evidence thus discovered convinced the authorities the documents were genuine yeah, copies of second. the conspiracy by which the Illuminati planned to use wars and revolutions to bring about the establishment of a one-world government, the powers of which they, headed by the Rothschilds, intended to usurp as soon as it was established, exactly in line with the United Nations plot of today. In 1785, the Bavarian United government Nations outlawed plot. the Illuminati <laughs> and closed the lodges of the Grand uh, Orient. I watched In 1786, the plot, yeah, they the plot finished all the details of the conspiracy. The English title of that plot. publication right. is The Original more. Writings of the Order and Sect of the Illuminati. Copies of the entire conspiracy were sent to all the heads of church and state in Europe. But the power of the Illuminati which was actually the power of the Rothschilds, was so great that this warning was ignored. So the book that he mentions doesn't exist. The thing that he mentions that his whole thing relies on doesn't exist. <laughs> it, is, it is quoted. I actually tried to find it. I went to archives. I tried to find the sources. I went to, I found books and read books that sourced this book, that used it as a source. And so when I went to the references, where they're supposed to say where they got the source, where the source is located, it doesn't exist. The book isn't real. It is used in every Illuminati yeah. conspiracy theory as a source to prove themselves, but it doesn't exist. What book was he talking about? Uh, the the book that he just mentioned that the Bavarian government released. Um, oh. The thing is, a collection of papers that the Bavarian government found were released and we actually have those copies and it's basically transcripts documents and all that related to uh, Weishaupt's organi organization that he called the Illuminati which he actually called that based off other organizations under similar names from the 1600s what his plan was and why the Bavarian government actually raided his place was because he was making a lot of public writings about how the people should revolt and overthrow the kings and it was an inspiration for the French Revolution. Uh, there are some people who actually said that it was his writings that caused him to overthrow the monarchy, and a lot of um, and a lot of people who basically were going through and trying to be pro monarchy. A lot of pro monarchs started this whole theory that he was the one who pushed for the French Revolution and he was behind the American Revolution, even though there's no substantial evidence for that because his organization never went above like 2,500 people. Um, he was removed from his post as a university teacher after the organization was broken up and he never went to France. Um, the papers that are mentioned of the person that was trying to organize the French Revolution, those don't exist. Um, so it's all really stupid. The only connection he has is the fact that his writings inspired certain people to revolt against France. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was an open fan of uh, Weishaupt's ideas about being anti-monarchy and pro-personal choice of the people. But Thomas Jefferson also was actually against his ideas of anti-religion because Weishaupt was very anti-religion um, and basically called it a cult of the people. So he was, he was well known. But, and he did have writings that inspired certain things. And the reason why his group, the, his society, which he called the Illuminati, was disbanded was because the Bavarian government found it to be dangerous to their own people. And this feeds into a couple other things, which I'll get into in just a few minutes. So it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's fascinating stuff that it's, it's interesting to look into it because it's fascinating. And once you know what actually happened, it makes all of this guy, all these guys' points just fall apart. And you realize, oh no, he's just, he's just a crackpot. He's the, uh, he's the, you know, the crackhead that you see each morning. Kind of wonder where he gets his drugs. Cause like, <laughs> this. <laughs> he's just that weird Nevertheless, uncle that you stay away Hello? from. Yeah, he's he's the weird guy at the party that no one wants to talk to because he'll just go into a long rant about the Jews and then he wonders why no one wants to be his friend, so then he makes a green text on 4chan. <laughs> That's Illuminati became That's a dirty specific. word and it went on like the, at the same time <laughs> Weishaupt ordered Illuminists 
Both of this day, uncle. The lodges of Blue Masonry and Tell formed their own secret societies within all secret societies. Interesting. Only so Masons kind of, who proved about the themselves internationalists <laughs> and those whose conduct what? proved they had the what? <laughs> okay, I guess I guess no one said anything. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm just kidding. Affected from God, right. were initiated into the Illuminati. The conspirators <laughs> donned the cloak of philanthropy and oh. humanitarianism oh, okay. to conceal oh, okay. their revolutionary and subversive activities. Yeah, well, uh, in mean, order to infiltrate in into Masonic lodges uh, in Britain, cool people. Weishaupt invited John Robeson over to Europe. I don't think that's what Robeson was a high degree Mason in the Scottish Rite. Well, he was a professor of natural views. philosophy at Edinburgh I University I would know. and secretary of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. Robeson did not the two fall for the lie that the objective of the Illuminati was to create a benevolent dictatorship. But he kept no his way the stream's only been going on so for eight well minutes. Good. That he was entrusted with a copy There's of no way it's only been going revised on. conspiracy for study and safekeeping. No, no, it can't be. Anyway, no, no. No because the heads Hell of state no. and church in France were was deluded was into ignoring the warnings oh, never mind. It's been an hour. the revolution crushed. broke out in 1789 as scheduled by Weishaupt. In order to alert, so he mentions Robinson and like how he visited Robinson and like gave him all these documents and then, you know, all that stuff. Weishaupt, after he was like exposed, he just moved to another area within the German, um, within the German Confederation or rather the Holy Roman Empire hmm. at the time, and that's where he died in 1830. He never went to Britain. He didn't have the money to go to Britain. He never met with Robinson. Robinson would actually write a book about how. The Weishaupt papers about anti-government and anti-religion led to the French Revolution, which is what has caused the Illuminati conspiracy theory, but there was never a meeting between them. Robinson doesn't write about a meeting between them. He doesn't mention Weishaupt coordinating it. It's He just mentions Weishaupt's writings inspired it enough to make people think that Weishaupt coordinated it. It's, it's, there's no source for it. He doesn't mention a source for it. He just rambles and he's like, anyway, the revolution went on as schedule. It's like, no, there was no schedule. I, <laughs> from a historian, from an amateur historian. They weren't even that good at scheduling. <laughs> even if they were scheduling. From the amateur historian's point of view, it's infuriating because there's no, there's no substance. There's nothing documenting any of what he's saying. And there's plenty of documents going against it. So it's like, well, you're just wrong, dude. Other governments to their danger. In 1798, Robeson published a book entitled Proof of a Conspiracy to Destroy All Governments and Religions. But his warnings were ignored. Exactly as our American people have been ignoring all warnings about the United Nations and the Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR. Now here is something that will stun and very likely outrage many who hear this. But there is documentary proof that our own Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton became students of Weishaupt's. Jefferson was one of Weishaupt's strongest defenders when he was outlawed Alexander by his Hamilton. government. And it was Jefferson who infiltrated the Illuminati into the then newly organized lodges of the Scottish Rite in New England. Here is the proof. In 1789, John Robeson warned all Masonic leaders in America that the Illuminati had infiltrated into their lodges. And on July 19, 1789, no, David Pappen, president of Harvard University, issued the same warning to the graduating class and lectured them on the influence Illuminism was acquiring on American Notice politics and religion. At all. He just says and to happens. top it off, John Quincy Adams, who had organized the New England Masonic Lodges, 
issued his warnings. He wrote three letters to Colonel William L. Stone, a top mason, hey, look, in which he exposed how source. Jefferson was using Masonic lodges for subversive, illuministic purposes. Those three letters are at this very time in Rittenberg Square Library in Philadelphia. In short, Jefferson, founder of the Democratic Party, was a member of the Illuminati, which at least partly accounts for the condition of the party at this time, and oh through infiltration of the so Republican it's Jefferson's fault now? I'm not. Uh, dude, dude, confused. I don't know. This dude is dude. scatterbrained. He's going off. What the hell's going on here? It's because this dude was one of those people in the Red Scare. Who well, were oh, like, sorry, well, well, sorry, uh, so, no, well, this is my bad. Oh, Wolf, this is my bad because this is such a clear and obvious thing that's going on. You know, this is a great fucking video. Like, I can barely just understand what's going on. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's so easy to keep track. So he's basically trying to say that Thomas Jefferson. I'm also really dumb. No, no, no. Like, yeah, no, no, no. I'm joking. I'm, no, I'm, jo I'm, I'm okay, joking, good, bro. Good. I was, right, right. I was just like, <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, it's just stupid. It's like, oh, Thomas Jefferson was it. Why? Because Thomas Jefferson was like a defender of Weishaupt and free speech and was basically saying like, it, Thomas Jefferson critiqued Weishaupt. He didn't like him completely. There's actual quotes about it. And there's no letters warning people of Illuminati infiltration. The Illuminati wasn't in. It's, it's, so, it's so stupid. Like you actually look into what he's saying and the sources don't exist. He just says these things because he knows that saying the sources exist will get people to believe him. And if they do exist, when they do exist, they don't actually back up what he's saying. They back up a small bit of what he's saying. It's just, it's like, what is wrong with this guy? Not to mention, Adams and Jefferson were political opponents. So Adams had every right, had every intention to, like, slander the guy. So, yeah. It's, it's really dumb. The whole thing's really dumb. There was no... Weishaupt did not have that much influence in the Americas. He was deposed, and people in America were like, see, this is why we have free speech. <laughs> Party, we have exactly nothing of loyal Americanism today. Oh, that he also keeps saying, like, because Jefferson was the founder of the Democratic Party, everything the Democratic Party has done is for the Illuminati. So it's some more of that identity politics stuff, kind of like what you see today, where Republicans like to hamper on, like, the fact that the Republican Party was the party that freed the slaves and it completely ignore the fact that the Republican Party was the party that pushed for Jim Crow laws and was reluctant to remove them. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get into politics here, but, like, when that stuff happens, it's yeah. stupid. Yeah. It's like... The reason why the Democratic Party is the way that it is from the perspective of the 60s is because um, that it was founded by someone part of the Illuminati. Also, the Democratic Party during the 60s was had a large proponent of people you know, for civil rights. So that's going to come up too. He calls uh, Martin uh, Luther King Jr. Uh, Martin Lucifer. So that's lovely. <laughs> oh hell yeah! No, yeah, because no, I got a feeling he actually was Dallin Lewis for yeah, the, this. This little, video little, goes into such uh, a strange look, direction. The way he channel's written, probably going to get demonetized before it ever becomes monetized at all. Astros rebuff at the Congress at Vienna, it created is. by oh, the Tsar yeah. of Russia. No takeaway, my money won't give you any. Destroy the Illuminati conspiracy. It merely forced them to adopt a new strategy, realizing that the one world idea was. For the moment, killed, the Rothschilds decided that to keep the plot alive, they'd have to do it by heightening their control of the money systems of the European nations. Earlier, by a ruse, the outcome of the Battle of Waterloo had been falsified. Rothschild had spread a story that Napoleon had won oh that God. battle. This, this whole story that had precipitated has been a terrific this panic happened. on the stock market in England. All stocks had plummeted yeah. down to practically zero, oh. and Nathan oh, yeah. Rothschild bought all There's the stocks no for, for virtually a penny it on is, its dollar it value. That tale. gave him complete no control of the happened. economy of Britain nothing about and virtually of all Europe. So immediately after that Congress in Vienna had boomeranged, Rothschild forced Britain to set up a new Bank of England, which he absolutely controlled. 
exactly as later, through Jacob Schiff, he engineered our own Federal Reserve Act, Jacob which Schiff. gave the House of Rothschild a secret control of the economy in the United States. But now for a moment, let's dwell on the activities of the Illuminati in the this United dude, this States. This dude is really saying that because money in 1826, became more centralized, as one the Captain more William Morgan decided it was his Illuminati duty to inform all Masons and the general public what the full truth was regarding the Illuminati, their secret plans and intended objectives. Also reveal the identities he really of the masterminds for of the conspiracy. The, old man going to track <laughs> the Illuminati <laughs> promptly we are only tried Morgan in. in absentia. No and way, convicted it's been 30 him of treason. 30 minutes on the video. They ordered one Richard oh, Howard, an English yeah, I, Illuminist, well, to carry out that. their sentence of execution as a traitor. Morgan was warned and he tried to escape to Canada, but Howard caught up with him near the border near the Niagara Gorge, to be exact, where he murdered him. This was verified in a sworn statement made in New York by one Avery Allen to the effect that he heard Howard render his report of the execution to a meeting of Knights Templars in St. John's Hall, New York. Ah, there it is, the Templars. He also told how arrangements <laughs> had been made to ship Howard back to England. Oh, yeah. That Allen affidavit is on record in New York City archives. Very few Masons and very few of the general public know that general disapproval that was, over that incident of game. murder caused approximately half of all the Masons in the northern jurisdiction of the United States to secede. Copies of the minutes of the meeting held to discuss that matter C -C. are still in existence in safe hands. And that all he that secrecy overemphasizes certain emphasizes the yeah, power words. of the really masterminds annoying. of the Illuminati <laughs> to prevent such terrible events of history C -C. from being taught in our schools. In the early 1850s, the Illuminati held a secret meeting in New York, Illuminati. which was addressed by a British <laughs> Illuminist named Wright. Those in the attendance were told to speed it up just a little bit because that it, the Illuminati was organizing to unite the nihilist and atheist groups with all other subversive groups into an international to be known as like communism. No one is an old now. That was what? when. It sounds like he's talking at a normal speed now. I know. <laughs> he's like actually normal now. When the word yeah. communist first came into being. And it was intended to be the supreme weapon and scare word to terrify the whole world and drive the terrorized peoples into the Illuminati one world scheme. So now he's talking about communists. So this is actually really interesting because communist had been a term since the 1700s and before. And was sort of like one of those words like utopia where it had been around for a while, like sort of back and forth. But it really came into like popular culture when Karl Marx wrote, you know, Das Kapital and the Communist Manif uh, Manifesto. Um, and people really started to like it became something more of a word people knew rather than just a word that existed but no one really knew what it meant type of deal so him saying that this word was created in 1850 during a um, during some sort of meeting is just patently false it's just not true this scheme communism was to be used to enable the Illuminati to foment future wars and revolutions Clinton Roosevelt a direct ancestor of Franklin Roosevelt Horace Greeley and Charles Dana, foremost newspaper publishers of that time, were appointed Charles to head Dana. a committee to raise funds for the new venture. This dude's got the a, funds were a provided by the Rock name Charles. as his last name. And this Point fund was used to finance Karl Marx and Engels when they wrote Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto in Soho, das England. Capital. So another thing about this is that he says that Charles Engels and Karl Marx Karl Marx wrote the Communist Manifesto and Das Kapital in Soho, England, because that's where the whole thing was going on. That's not true. Both those books were written in the Netherlands. And I think that, I think it was, Karl Marx only wrote Communist Manifesto. That was just all him. Charles Ingalls had nothing to do with it, and they didn't even know each other when he wrote the Communist Manifesto. Das Kapital was written by Karl Marx with some, while he was talking to Ingalls, but they didn't write it together. So that's also false. Like when you start getting those small things wrong and like basic stuff about that, it starts to make your entire argument fall apart because this whole argument is based on the fact that both those people were hired and indoctrinated by the Illuminati.
during these meetings in Soho, England, and then forced to write these books in that same town, which just isn't true because if you look into it, that's not how it happened. <laughs> like, it's you look into the basics of it, and it just just falls flat on its face. It's the same thing as like the French Revolution being started by Weishaupt, some failed professor who had zero money and died poor. And this clearly reveals that communism is not a so-called ideology, but a secret weapon, a bogeyman word to serve the purpose of the Illuminati. Carl Weishaupt Mark. died yeah, in 1830, but prior to his death, like he prepared a revival. Were... What? I said just like how the Nazi wonder weapons were. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what it was. Whenever I think of, of wonder weapons, conspiracy. I just think of the ray gun. <laughs> the ray gun. I think of the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> A failure. The ray gun. What Bro, about the Nazi just UFO? Watch. About UFO? That yeah. UFO? No, you what about that? How they got to the no, moon? what about that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> What about no? What about that Walker? Or whatever they have from Star Wars, they were building one of those. Oh yeah, that's right. They were trying to build the Death Star. That's how the moon got made. That's yeah, how the moon got made. <laughs> the moon Nazis. didn't exist. The moon didn't exist before 1943. Fun fact. Yeah, the moon didn't exist before 1943. That's why you don't see any pictures of it. Yeah, Mater was the one of the leading generals in the Wehrmacht. <laughs> don't question it. Oh my god. Just Rommel secretly all this time. Rommel was, <laughs> was secretly better. <laughs> Rommel was from <laughs> Jupiter. Oh my god. Adolf, Adolf Hitler was just Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> Palpatine, but with a mustache. And less bald. I have, I have reasonable amounts of proof to say that Rommel was more than likely a furry. Just look at what they called him. What? Is it oh, yeah, obviously. The, what did they call him? Like the sand wolf like or something wolf. like that? I don't know. The desert fox. Desert yeah. fox, yeah. yeah. I just made a bootleg Rommel. <laughs> sand wolf. <laughs> sand wolf. Great, great value, Earl Rommel. Ca- Rommel. <laughs> it's, hey, sand mom, cat. can we have Erwin Rommel? No, we got Erwin Rommel at home. No. <laughs> sand wolf. No, we got sand wolf. Oh my god. That just that sounds like something that like a name used to describe sand someone in one wolf. of those really crappy movies that take place in the Middle East. Um like they're in like <laughs> Afghanistan or something. You know, that you sounds got, like a shitty rock band name. Like a crappy nickname for a bad guy in an A team episode. <laughs> an A team episode. <laughs> it just sounds the like Illuminati. a shitty rock band. Crappy 80s rock band. Wage reducing the sand to organize, finance, Radical. direct, and control all international organizations and groups by working their agents into they executive just positions. The worst at the top. Song the 80s has In the ever United heard. States, we have Woodrow Wilson, Franklin Roosevelt, Jack Kennedy, Johnson, Rusk, McNamara, Fulbright, etc., as prime examples. In addition, while Karl Marx was writing the Communist Manifesto under the direction of one group of Illuminists, Professor Karl Ritter of Frankfurt University was writing the antithesis under direction of another group. The idea was that those who direct the overall conspiracy could use the differences in those two so-called ideologies to enable them to divide larger and larger members of the human race into opposing camps so that they could be armed and then brainwashed into fighting and destroying each other, and particularly to destroy all particularly. political and religious institutions. Particularly. The work Ritter started was continued after his death and completed by the German so-called philosopher Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche, who founded Nietzscheism. This Nietzscheism was later developed uh, into fascism and, and then into Nazism and was used Nazi. to foment World Wars I and II. In 1834, yeah. And that's another problem. It's it's he's banking on the whole idea that Nietzsche was anti-religion. He wasn't, and it's falling into one of those traps again, where he's like, Nietzsche said God is dead. Yeah, it was basically based on mo- morals and talking about how the morals had basically been gone and like we didn't have morals anymore, and like how God is dead and we've killed him. 
is sort of a whole statement of like our morals are no more and we are the people who have done it we have destroyed our culture Nietzsche wasn't even the main proponent for fascism the main proponent for, for fascism was you know survival of the fittest it's you look into it below the surface and its entire thing falls apart <laughs> that's a dark way to look at the world yeah, well, that was Nietzscheism. That's that's literally Nietzscheism. Is the whole idea that we have destroyed our morals. We have God is dead, and we have killed him. We have killed our own morals. Not that God is dead because religion is stupid, but God is. But like God is dead, we have killed him. And that is a tragedy. That's a tragedy that we've done that. That was the point of Nietzsche saying that. But conspiracy theories theorists look at that and go, "Ha ha! He was he was trying to destroy religion." When in reality, he was talking about how. This whole idea of like trying to be a super, what we would call today an internet atheist and be against religion because it's cool and hip is a bad thing because religion has, you know, if you're looking at it from the secular point of view, religion has utility usage for having a moral and good society. And that was the whole point Nietzsche had. And if you so actually, funny. if you actually study Pro-religion. Nietzsche's. If you actually studied Nietzsche's work, instead of just taking his stuff out of context, you'd understand that. But this guy didn't, because he's just a failed playwright. So, Nietzsche is the greatest counter to his arguments, if he's going to bring it up as like part of the Illuminati. So, yeah. Italian revolutionary leader Giuseppe Mazzini was selected by the Illuminati to direct their revolutionary program throughout the world. He served in that capacity until he died in 1872. But some years before he died, Mazzini had enticed an American general named Albert Pike into the Illuminati. Pike was fascinated by the idea of a one-world government, and ultimately he became the head of this Luciferian conspiracy. Between 1859 and 1871, he, Pike, worked out a military blueprint for three world wars and various revolutions throughout the world, which he considered would forward the conspiracy to its final stage in the 20th century. Which is definitely Again, I remind that these conspirators were never concerned with immediate out. success. They always operated on a long range view. Pike did most of his work in his home in Little Rock, Arkansas. But a few years later, when the Illuminati's lodges of the Grand Orient became suspect and repudiated because of Mazzini's revolutionary activities in Europe, Pike organized what he called the new and reformed Palladian Rite. He set up three supreme councils, one in Charleston, South Carolina, one in Rome, Italy, and a third in Berlin, Germany. He had Mazzini establish 23 subordinate councils in strategic locations throughout the world. These have been the secret headquarters of the world revolutionary movement ever since. Long before Marconi invented radio, just me or just the scientists in the more Illuminati more have found the- Because I sped it up. Because he was going way too slow. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I can't tell because my, my district keeps crashing like a motherfucker, I swear. And feel free Sucks to interrupt to it if, if you hear something that sounds stupid. I don't want to be the only one interrupting the video. So, Bro, if we were to this interrupt entire- every time we heard stupid. something stupid, we wouldn't even get to play the yeah, video. that's a good point. That's why I keep pausing every two minutes because it's another stupid point that I'm just like, I, I have to explain it because there's there's nothing true about this. This is just fake. We're only 35 minutes in, and it's taken us like an hour to get through this. Hey, Frycorps, you still there? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm here. Frycorps, are you good? <laughs> He's yeah, been I'm silent good. for a straight hour. <laughs> He's just no, been listening. It, it, it's You're just right, I mean, hey, I, I could... Oh, living? What's up? What, what were you saying? It's a, I, I think you got... Oh, it. yeah, it's just... It's just, it's just stupid. I literally have I no can, idea. We just said my can, entire Discord just had to die. Oh, stop interrupting my Fricor. Cool. I'm trying to listen to it. Yeah, uh, I'm by the way, you just label this thing as stupid. Okay, so the whole thing, I, I could see if he's going on about like you know the history of the Illuminati, what what they're up to, but the fact that he tries to like just bundle it all in one into communism, it's like. It, you've gone too far. That's just yeah. Yeah. The the whole point of communism is to like get rid of the state. How is that globalist? How is that one world government? The whole point is to have a bunch of self governing communes that aren't connected to each other, that don't do anything, that just 
their main goal is just survival, more or less. But no, communism is a globalist plot. It's one of those things where it becomes painfully obvious the more you listen to this guy that he just doesn't know anything that he's talking about. He hasn't read the Communist Manifesto. He hasn't read Das Kapital. He hasn't actually looked into what Robinson has written. He hasn't looked into what's actually caused the French Revolution. He didn't learn about Napoleon. He didn't read up on the Congress of Vienna. He hasn't looked into these writings he keeps quoting because he's misinterpreting them left to right. So either A, he's maliciously, knowingly telling people falsehoods, which would make sense because this dude died poor, or B, B, he is so convinced he is right, he doesn't feel like he needs to read these things. I feel like it's a bit of both. So, it's, yeah, I feel you. It's like, I mean, the whole thing is just stupid, but I, I, wanted, just to, I wanted to do this live stream sure because so. I, I saw it in my recommended, and I was just like, that's interesting. I wonder what this crackpot's on about. Because I like watching crackpot videos where I'm just like, what a bunch of fools. And I watched this, I was like, this is just infuriating because he speaks with so much authority and uses these stupid sources for the minuscule, stupid items to give himself that, like, um, the credibility of the average viewer. But he then just goes off and goes off the rails, and then he has no sources for the actual meaningful points he tries to make, and then misinterprets everything that actually matters. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just... It's just the whole McCarthyism um, goose chase, where it's like witch hunt, yeah, witch hunt. Where we're gonna, where we're gonna, you know, we're gonna take out our political opponents, and we'll just go, we'll just go on this whole rabbit trail. Oh, oh, back in Bavaria, a couple hundred years ago, he yeah. started a conspiracy, and that's why, that's why communism. Yeah, that's why communism. And then just use all these stupid buzzwords like Rothschilds and Weishaupt, and it's like, okay, where's your proof Weishaupt did anything? Oh, you're just telling me how it happened without any actual evidence that it actually happened that way? And it's all very, very loosely tied together and doesn't actually tie itself together. It's it's really, really dumb. So I I've I've heard some stupid like conspiracy theories, but th this almost like tops everyone. This but the is, thing is, the thing is, there's actual like research behind a lot of what he's saying in terms of like him using all these different articles and sources. The thing is, is it's all wrong. He's he's drawn the wrong conclusion from the dots he's laid out. He's gone off and made a connect the dots puzzle that's actually really cool looking, but then he's connected in the way he wants to connect them and made a freaking mess. You know? The, the connect yeah, the, the connect it the sounds dots, like me. Like, I could do it. The connect the dots I, I he set up if you connect it right, creates a Michelangelo style painting, but he's connecting it to make a ugly Picasso. No, no offense to Picasso's work, but that's the comparison there. Also, we're yeah, about I, to have... I just, like, I can... We're about to have another guy join in. Hang on. Let's see if we can get this guy in without restarting. I might have to leave because my internet is so just, bad right just now. Just restart your Discord, and that should work. That should fix everything. Turn it on and off again. Yeah. Off and on again. Just for my phone. Off and on again. Yeah. <laughs> on and name. then off again. Yeah. Just, just turn it off. Leave just it shoot, on. I'm going to shoot it. This is fucking... Typical Chicago. Always trying to make things difficult. Yeah, shoot it. This is pointless. And I might accidentally get kicked. I might accidentally kick myself out of the group. Hang on. I did. Stupid. Rough. I'm sorry. That was my bad. Yeah, it's your bad. <laughs> Tyler, no. He's in a different chat. What the hell is he doing? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, all the... the... <laughs> Oh, they're gone. Well, the key bought a sword. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, and play the video. We're ending this stream. The means Bye, guys. For Pike and the heads of his council Bye. to communicate secretly. It was the discovery of that secret Shows that enabled over. intelligence to officers to understand how apparently unrelated incidents, one such as the assassination of an Austrian prince at Sarajevo, oh, there we go. took place oh, there simultaneously go. throughout the world, which developed into a war or a revolution. Pike's plan uh, was as simple as it has proved effective. That's it not called simple. for communism, Nazism, 
political Zionism and it other international Nazism movements and communism? be organized and used to foment Nazism didn't even world exist. wars and at least two major revolutions. Saying Nazism was created by the by the um, by the Jews. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying that that Nazism, that Hitler was put in power by Jewish bankers. <laughs> uh, uh, Hitler proceeded to kill. <laughs> And that the and uh, that kill the, millions of their own that, people. That the Holocaust was bankrolled by Jewish bankers. <laughs> <laughs> Pay for the even loan. <laughs> he lost it with it. Oh, I, yeah. I swear. He's, you know, it'd be funny what? if he said Hitler was Jewish. Oh my god. Hang on, let me help my my friend here. He's having the diabetics having trouble joining the <laughs> chat. Freaking diabetic. <laughs> nah, but you just. But he's here. He just needs to click one button. Yeah, he's being an idiot. Is it, Bruh. <laughs> Scroll up. Scroll up, you dumbass. <laughs> just just click the green button. Oh my god. Alright, well let's just keep listening to this to this uh to this crackhead. The first world war was to be fought so as to enable the Illuminati to destroy Tsarism in Russia, as vowed by Rothschild after the Tsar had torpedoed his scheme at the Congress in Vienna, and to transform Russia into a stronghold of atheistic communism. The differences stirred up by agents of the Illuminati between the British and German empires were to be used to foment this war. So his whole argument that World War One was specifically created to destroy Tsarism is retarded. And all you have to do is look at like what was going on in Russia to see that that's completely wrong. It did not. It did not. You did not need World War One to destroy Russia. Russia was already on a path to have the Tsar get deposed. It almost got destroyed during the Russo-Japanese War, and it very well could have if the war went worse. Though uh, Russia almost collapsed during um, the bread riots after, I think, the Tsar's wedding or his coronation. I forget which one, but some big party they had, some big shindig. They had the bread oh, riots, and that almost brought down Russia. So the fact that they're like, World War One was specifically started to bring down the Tsar because the Rothschild were were uh, upset about the Tsar not playing ball with them in the Congress of Vienna, which isn't true at all, is is dumb just based off the whole concept of it and understanding the Russian political um, in climate before World War One and leading up to World War One. The Russian political climate had been broken since the 1880s. And hell, even before that, the reason why Russia had to get out of the Crimean War was because they were on the verge of a massive revolution to overthrow the Tsar. And Russia almost lost the Napoleonic Wars for the same reason. And going back even further, they almost lost, I mean, they had trouble during the Seven Years' War. Russia and revolution almost go as well together as Russia and, I mean, as revolution in France. So um, we just had Tyler join in. Um, his, his best trait is that he has diabetes and his pancreas doesn't work. So, um, we're, I'll get him up to speed. He didn't have to scroll up either. Wait, so you said that the Tsar almost got overthrown during his coronation? Or something like that. He almost got overthrown during the bread rites in the early 1900s. Like, 1903 or something. Um, How are you going to get overthrown as soon as you just get crowned? Because that, the Russia was unstable. That was Go figure. <laughs> What's new? <laughs> What's new here? What's new? <laughs> that's just funny. Yeah, that's no. saying, no. it's, uh, it's that's like saying someone's uh, some spawn killing. Don't just like spawn, don't go spawn hand killing. Hand. All right, so that's Tyler, like I'm not sure if you can game. hear me, but basically, we're 30 minutes into this two and a half hour long video. Um, the dude is a failed playwright who's bitter at Hollywood and blames them for all of his failures and has beliefs like that Hollywood's controlled by the communists and that communists is a Jewish plot. Communism is a Jewish plot to make a one world government that the United Nations um, is the same exact thing, and that the Jews bankrolled Nazis to cause the Holocaust. Uh, that's basically the idiocy of these arguments. Also that the Illuminati caused the French Revolution, even though Weishaupt, the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati, 
uh, was living in Germany at the time, and there's no documented proof of that. So now that you're up to speed, we can continue. <laughs> Did I give a good enough rundown? Anyone have anything else to add? That's like getting admin in a Discord server and then immediately getting banned. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Basically. Damn. You uh, we can make that happen. Yeah, there we go. After the war would be ended, communism was to be built up and used to destroy other governments and weaken religions. World War II, when and if necessary, was to be fomented by using the controversies between fascists and political Zionists. And here let it be noted that Hitler was financed by Krupp. No, he wasn't. The Warburgs, nope. the Rothschilds, nope. and other internationalist bankers. And that the see, slaughter see, of the see what he does? He lists three buzzword names. Krupp. There's no way they could have financed him because they were a mil they were an arms manufacturer who were on the verge of bankruptcy before World War II. The Wahlbergs, who the hell are they? They're nobodies. Why would they bankroll them? And yeah, if they did, that's one Wahlbergs. person. And then the Rothschilds. Dude, everyone says the Rothschilds funded anything bad. So you have those three people, one no way. Two, no one knows who they are. They don't matter. And three, everyone says that. And then he's like, and other entities. So you're talking about you. You have no. You have nothing. You have nobody. You just have names. Anyone can say that about anything. I'm tired of him saying Krupp funded anything because after World War One, they were very, 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 very bad off. They they were on the verge of bankruptcy. They were basically about to die, and they were only saved thanks to World War World War Two. Supposed six hundred thousand Jews by Hitler didn't bother the Jewish internationalist bankers at all. That slaughter Classic. was necessary in order to create worldwide hatred of the German people and thus bring about the war against them. In short, this Second World War was to be fought to destroy Nazism and to increase the power of political Zionism so that the state of Israel could be established in Palestine. During this World War ah, II, international communism was to be built up until it equaled in strength that of United Christendom. When it reached that point, it was to be contained and kept in check until required for the final social cataclysm. So he mentions how Nazism was made to have the Holocaust happen, and the Holocaust's purpose was to make people hate um, the Nazis and justify the war and then cr give sympathy to the Jews. That's stupid because the Holocaust wasn't known until after the war. The war was over by the time the Holocaust was well known. So that whole argument is immediately false just by looking into it. Okay, so 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 Tyler, this dude is a failed playwright who tried to write anti-communist plays and nobody would nobody would support him because they were crazy and like super super, you know, just crackpot so he was convinced that hollywood was controlled by communists started the red scare can you actually hear me? oh we can now there oh. you are no the explanation wasn't shit Tyler. it's just you're diabetic <laughs> you're diabetic so you can't understand the diabetes is known to make the eyes the ears the eye oh god okay i'm gonna shut up now so let me let me start from the top here and for people who are joining stream here's your explanation um i'm gonna try to make this as short and sweet as possible so this guy, his name is Myron Fagan. He recorded these LPs in 1967. He was born in 18, in the 1880s. And um, he is one of the people who really pushed the whole Illuminati conspiracy theory, uh, specifically surrounding the Bavarian uh, Illuminati that was in existence between the 1870s and the 1880s. Um, he tried to write a play about how uh, Franklin Roosevelt was a communist and gave all of Europe to Stalin in some globalist plot to control the world. And understandably, no one wanted to use it because he was dissing Roosevelt, who everyone loved. And instead of him taking it on the chin, he was like, this is obviously because Hollywood is filled with communists. Um, so he then started the Red Scare or helped start the Red Scare against Hollywood. Um, and then he tried to push forward more plays, which everyone hated because they were so stupid, continued to blame it on the communist globalists, and then made this video. And currently we're at like World War II, 
And the whole thing is basically like how the Illuminati caused the American Revolutionary War and the French Revolution, even though he's not using any evidence for either of those. Um, how the Congress of Vienna was the first point to try to like create a United Nations, which, I mean, it was the Holy Alliance. And like how the Tsar of Russia stopped it, even though the Tsar of Russia is the one who offered it as a suggestion. And that World War I was literally made to overthrow the Tsar as retribution for stopping the Illuminati's plan, even though there were plenty of other times where that could have happened. And the, Rush, the Tsar is the one who threw up the idea. So that's that's kind of a too long didn't read version. I kind of sorry if that doesn't make too much sense. I'm a diabetic. Most things don't make sense. That's Sugar doesn't point. make sense. That's a good. That's point. a good point. Yeah, very very good point. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead anyway. and continue. Um, and uh, I'm gonna leave because my internet is acting like a bitch, and I'm gonna go. You're leaving because you're probably closer. I will get it to work. But he's leaving because he's upset that we're yeah, making fun of the Illuminati, and he actually believes in the Illuminati. No. Yeah. He's actually no. so like a diabetic gets on no, stream no, no. and you instantly, oh man, the internet's acting <laughs> you up. You join and go. he's like, oh god, the diabetic is here. Get let work. No, no. I have to. You have to go be a loser somewhere else. Yeah, he has to go be no, a loser. No, I have to Chicago shoot my internet else. because it's not. Uh, loser Chicago and loser Chicago. Somewhere else. Go shooting. shoot someone or something. Yeah, go be a Chicagoan somewhere else. <laughs> I will. Do it. All right. All right. Bye. All right, Screw bye. you guys. Yeah, yeah. Gay. As we know now, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin put that exact policy into effect. And Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, and Johnson continued that same exact policy. World War III is to be fomented by using the so-called controversies. The agents of the Illuminati, operating what? under whatever new name, are now stirring up between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Muslim world. That Muslim. war is to be directed in such <laughs> a manner that all of Islam and political Zionism, Israel, will destroy each other, while at the same time, the remaining nations, once more divided on this issue, will be forced to fight themselves into a state of complete exhaustion, physically, mentally, spiritually, and economically. economically. Can any thinking person doubt that the intrigue now going on in the near, middle, and far east is designed to accomplish that satanic objective? Pike himself foretold all this in a statement he made to Mazzini on August 15, 1871. Pike stated that after World War III is ended, those who will inspire to undisputed world domination will provoke the greatest social cataclysm the world has ever known. Oh, yes. Quoting his own in words, taken from the letter he wrote to Mazzini, and which letter is now catalogued in the British Museum in London, England, he said, We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a great social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to all nations the effect of absolute anger, the origin of savagery, <laughs> of most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere, the people forced to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude. Oh, shit. Did the oh, shit. Did the oh, shit. come into your house? I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <laughs> Muslims are getting in. Watch out. <laughs> the Muslims and the atheists are coming for you. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, the, the Illuminati just broke down his door. <laughs> oh my god. But no, he's just like, oh yeah, the, the Muslims, they're also in on it. It's like, is the whole theory is everyone is in on it except for the Christians. Didn't they also? Didn't he at some point in that little spiel say that they were gonna fight so much that it would break their like spiritual, their faith or whatever? It exhaust their faith. Does he not know history? Did he not read about the Crusades dude, and like dude, the constant dude, warfare in the Middle we were, East? We were talking about this earlier and about how he talks about World War One was made to specifically bring down the Tsar, but Russia was like at its most stable at the beginning of World War One. In the Russo-Japanese War, it was less stable. Uh, during the bread riots, it was less stable. During the Crimean War, it was less stable. Before that, it was less stable. Bef like, it could have been done at any point, but no, we're starting World War One. He also mentions how someone's like, yes, after World War Three, the world will be under one world government in 1887, when the term World War wasn't coined until like 19, to like the middle of World War One. 
It's it's. I want to know what fa- I want to know what fanfics this guy was writing for what his version of Dude, World War you, One and if, Two were. If you want to know who this guy is, it's it's Myron Fagan. M Y R O N Fagan. F A G A N. Dude, that is an sounds absolute, like the kind of name what's, for a guy what's, that What's would funny? And I, okay, shit. don't don't hate me for this. Fagan is a Jewish surname, and he's talking about how the Jews are the evil people. The irony was well, yeah, completely it, lost. It's on this like the Church of Scientology. He escaped, so he knows all the secrets. Oh, duh. totally, totally. And we just have to believe him. Just believe me, bro. Just believe me. I mean, how could we not? Obviously, the the Jewish people and everyone except the Christians allied themselves in a grand conspiracy with the Illuminati to create world wars to yeah. do stupid shit and kill everyone. And he also mentions like World War Three. I mean, at the time, because this was in 67, a third world war looked possible, but it's it hasn't happened, and so he's just been proved false. <laughs> so... Alright, I'm back. Welcome back. Did the Illuminati get you? Almost, I but I, I fought them off. Now. We don't know if good, the Illuminati good. Welcome back. Welcome back. it. Now we, must be, took his voice. now we have to continue right. to prove that the Illuminati is not really. <laughs> we have an Illuminati agent among us now. Of course, he's going to be like, yeah, this is stupid bullshit. All this is fake. Who came up with this bullcrap? <laughs> Joe, Boy, Joe Boy was Who's dragged away to this? and the person who has replaced him is now an Illuminati sleeper agent. No, don't spoil my secret, man. <laughs> Disillusioned with Christianity. You can't know. Whose deistic spirits will be from that moment on without direction and leadership. So. And anxious for an idea, yeah. but now without I'm gonna knowledge have to, where to send have to have its adoration, take down this will receive the true light once we're done. through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought Lucifer. finally out into public view. Oh. A manifestation Tyler, which will result love it from a general mentions, reactionary movement, the civil which will movement. follow the destruction of Christianity and oh, atheism, oh, both conquered oh, oh, and exterminated at the same time. When Mazzini died in 1870, Pike yeah, made another Italian revolutionary leader named moments. Adrian Lemmy, his successor. Yes, Lemmy, sir. in turn, was succeeded by Lenin and Trotsky, then by Stalin. The revolutionary activities of all those men were That's financed by British, way of French, power German, and American succession. international bankers, all of them dominated by the House of Rothschild. We are supposed to believe that the international bankers of today, like the money changers of Christ's day, are only the tools or agents of the great conspiracy, but actually they are the masterminds behind all of it. While the general public has been brainwashed <laughs> by all the mass communications media into believing that communism is a movement of the so-called workers. The actual fact is that both British and American intelligence officers have authentic documentary evidence that international liberals operating through their international banking Liberal houses, bad. particularly the House of Rothschild, have financed both sides in every war and revolution since 1776. Those who today comprise the conspiracy Oh, they have those documents, and you you know that because you've seen them? Where are they? Where are those documents that prove your entire argument? Oh, you can't show them because because your dad works for the CIA, and he's shown you, but he can't show anybody else? Okay. My dad works at Xbox. He can get you banned. That's literally basically what he's saying. It's like the, the CIA and FBI have these documents that prove that the Illuminati's done all this stuff. Oh, where are they? They have them. So how do you... <laughs> I like how he's also, how he made that little, had that little nugget about, like, the so-called workers, and is basically equating, like, the Rothschild family with communists, because the mega-wealthy fucking business families of the 1800s are definitely fucking commies. Dude, another thing, they another love thing. sharing. The whole, like, conspiracy about the Illuminatis and the, and the Masons and all that, that was actually started in the 1800s by the rich people who were worried that they were going to overthrow the rich and kill them, that the people were going to overthrow the monarchies. That whole conspiracy came out because Weishaupt got found out writing anti-monarchy uh, writings, like I was saying earlier. And so all the after the French Revolution, when people basically came out and said, yeah, we were inspired by Weishaupt's writings. And Weishaupt is the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati branch, which is what is commonly referred to as the Illuminati. So everyone is now like, oh, the Illuminati caused the French Revolution. Well, no, it, the, the writings of Weishaupt inspired it. Um, but the rich became insanely paranoid that 
um, the Illuminati was still around and they were going to overthrow the governments and install democracy. But now, but now it's it's pe things that us like Joe Schmoes believe, thinking that it's going to be a tyranny. So go figure. It's a big circle. Hey, hey, the Illuminati can change our minds, you asshole. Okay, yeah, that's, that's there good. are indeed there are indeed department has found that tyranny is all the new hot shit. Uh, maybe 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 we should go to 1984. CFR in the United States should. direct you our governments. Them. Whom they hold in usury the through such methods as the society. Federal Reserve System. And I'm not allowed to take a crap in the middle of the library. It is literally 1984. Deadass. I can't is. wipe my butt with library book papers. This is 1984. I can't take a I shit. I feel like that would be the one case, the though, in modern society where, like, everyone would be clamoring for you to burn the books after that happened. If I saw someone <laughs> taking a shit and wiping their ass with a library book, I'd be like, yeah, this place needs to go. We're burning down this whole library. I'm sorry. Maybe the knowledge is wrong. So I'm, here. I'm sure there's <laughs> copies of everything in here. Hopefully not the marks. The what do you mean marks. I'm not allowed to take a shit in, in a tank? <laughs> Literally 1984. Literally 1984. Born to crap, forced to wipe. America <laughs> to fight wars such as Vietnam that, that created by the card. United Nations so as to further Pike's Illuminati plans to bring the world to that stage of the conspiracy when atheistic communism and the whole of Christianity can be forced into an all-out third world war within each remaining nation as well as on an international scale. <laughs> the headquarters of the great conspiracy in the late 1700s was in Frankfurt, Germany. You'll, you'll notice that he uses buzzwords like Luciferian uh, Jewry, um, they, the plot, stuff like that. It is the plot. The plot. Wasn't he just saying how he needed something to happen so everyone hated Germany? So why did he? Is he saying the bad headquarters are in Germany or the good? The the, the Illuminati's headquarters are in Germany and have been in Germany. But the whole thing is that people need to hate Germany, according to the Illuminati, to kill Germany, so that more people are willing to go to commun so that the communists from Russia get more power. Right. My, my I don't understand. How many drugs did this guy do before he came up with this shit? This is like some <laughs> Scooby Doo level like global -Doo. politics. <laughs> 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 Rothschild? It was you the whole time. <laughs> well, Zoic Scoob, we found the Rothschild. <laughs> oh, we have gotten away with it. It wasn't for you meddling playwrights. <laughs> <laughs> and your stupid podcast. Oh my god. <laughs> I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling playwrights. Whose and phone your... has got you going off? Why is there a T-Mobile jingle? Oh, hold on. <laughs> Turn off your phone. Oh, Why is this T-Mobile? The House of They're Rothschild had been established by Mayor Anshelm, <laughs> who adopted the Rothschild name and linked together other international financiers who had literally sold their souls to the devil. After the Bavarian government's exposure in 1786, the conspirators moved their headquarters to Switzerland, then to London. Since World War II, after Jacob Schiff, the Rothschild's boy in America, died, the headquarters of the American branch has been in the Harold Pratt Building, New York, and the Rockefellers, originally protégés of Schiff, have taken over the manipulation of finances in America for the Illuminati. In the final phases of the conspiracy... The Notice how he just said a bunch of words without actually saying anything. One world government right, will I'm consist back. of the king dictator, Welcome. head of the United Nations, the CFR, and a few billionaires, economists, and scientists who have proved their devotion Communist. to the great conspiracy. Communist. All others are to be integrated into a vast conglomeration of mongrelized humanity. This man can't even speak. Actually slaves. No, he can't. Now let me show you how our federal government and the American people have been sucked into the one world takeover plot of the Illuminati I great conspiracy. Else, and, oh, so. and always bear in mind that the United Nations was created to become the housing for that one world so-called liberal conspiracy. Remember, liberal bad. The real foundations of the plot for the takeover of the United States were laid during the period of our civil war. Not that Weishaupt and the earlier masterminds had ever overlooked the new world, as I have previously indicated, 
Weishaupt had his agents planted over here as far back as the Revolutionary War. But George Washington... Weishaupt was a very poor university teacher in Bavaria. He had no money and never had any money. Yeah, I just found that I was Googling the Rothschild family and I just put a picture of one of them in the chat. And he just, like, this picture, the expression he's making, he's just like, can you guys please just stop making conspiracies about me being fucking... <laughs> he looks depressed. Jewish he Illuminati so member, sad. like, I'm tired of this bullshit. I'm just so trying to make sad. money, my guys. I'm just trying to be a rich Lord Baron who abuses the working class. Stop making me out to be some evil mastermind. I'm just a bad person. I swear to God, Someone I'm not a communist. I'm trying to be the shit out of my workers. Photo. Remember, if you remove the mask of the Rothschilds, you'll just find out that all the conspiracy theories are are drugs. Every conspiracy theory even, starts with even the one about like that black powder plot. That conspiracy theory never happened. The blowing up of the attempt to blow up Parliament. Every single conspiracy. See, Whether the big conspiracy about that one that nobody talks about enough is that wasn't actually black powder that they were moving around. They actually got really smart and dyed all of their cocaine black so that they could smuggle it because if anybody caught them with it, they'd be like, oh, it's just gunpowder, man. Exactly. So that was actually, they were just trying to give their politicians copious amounts of coke to make them write faster. Because back, back in that period, it was very bad to have cocaine and they were getting it all from South America. The whole, I mean, the whole can you imagine like... like Speaking of conspiracy Look how fast theories. our politicians move today. Their bills they can type out on a fucking laptop. Can you imagine having to write bills for them to actually be laws and how long that shit would take and then copying all that shit? Yeah. You need some coke, man. Speed no, honestly. Uh, speaking of like of like crazy theories, I've got a video I'm going to be making about Hotzendorf and how he planned out World War One, just as like a sort of a joke video, so keep your eye out for that. Washington was more than a match for them. Finally. It was during the Civil War that the conspirators launched their first concrete efforts. We know that Judah Benjamin, chief advisor of Jefferson Davis, was a Rothschild agent. We also know that there were Rothschild agents planted in Abraham Lincoln's cabinet who tried to sell him into a financial dealing. We know that he was a Rothschild agent. How? How do we know that? Do you have evidence? No, you're just going to say we know. So that anyone who questions you, it's like the emperor's new clothes. <laughs> oh, man. We How long have we been doing this? Were With the house of Rothschild. This man, but old age, you just have to speed it up, right? Yeah, and it still feels like he's talking <laughs> slow. I know, saw through the scheme and bluntly rejected it, thereby incurring the undying enmity of the Rothschilds, exactly as the Russian Tsar did when he torpedoed their first League of Nations at the Congress in Vienna. Which he did. Investigation of the assassination of Lincoln revealed that the assassin, Booth was a member of a secret yeah. conspiratorial group. Uh, assassination. Because there were a number of highly Sounds important like some, government some officials involved, from some the name of, of the group song. was never revealed, and it became a mystery, exactly as the assassination of Jack Kennedy still is a mystery. But I am sure it will not for long remain a mystery. But what if anyway, it does? The ending I love how he always ends one of those things with, anyway, after that bombshell... What's interesting is that he's not completely wrong about Lincoln. So after Lincoln was basically pushing for the whole, hey, let's let's have a reconstruction in the South, let's rebuild and reconcile, a lot of Republican uh, politicians didn't like that and already didn't like Lincoln. Uh, they didn't like the way he handled the war. They didn't like the way he was going to handle the South after the war, and they wanted to basically take advantage of the South for their own gain. And so the whole idea that possibly Booth was sort of given the opportunity to kill Lincoln because they wanted him dead, uh, is it's a viable is it actually a viable argument that he was that Booth was given the opportunity to kill Lincoln because other Republican opposition to Lincoln wanted him dead because there's there were several assassination Lincoln attempts. was a little bit of a headache to the Republicans so they decided to return the favor right and then his the <laughs> vice president to Lincoln um, was actually trying to follow in his footsteps so then the Republican Party made several laws to basically give them the right to impeach him if he continued doing what he was doing, and he continued doing what he was doing, so they impeached him. And so then he played ball with them after that. Kind of makes you think. I'm not, like, big onto that whole idea, but it's interesting to think that it's a very big possibility. It's not some Illuminati stuff. It's just the Republican Party from that time period trying to take advantage of a situation and get rich off of abusing the South, which the South still actually suffers from Republican policies of occupation after the Civil War, even today. That's the reason why places like Alabama and Georgia have really low rates of literacy and really poor quality of life because 
it was just completely destroyed after the Civil War and the resources were abused. That's why it's it's sort of like a case study that you can have here for why Africa still sucks because of how it was exploited. Sorry, a bit of a tangent, but I thought that point was interesting because I live with a policy of there's nuggets of truth in everything, no matter how crackpot. So stuff like this is always fascinating because it can be like, well, there's obviously a reason why he believes this. And a lot of it, you know, you can see where it comes from. But like with this, it's like, why does he think Lincoln was assassinated by a group of people? Oh, yeah, because the Republicans hated Lincoln and wanted him dead. Oh, that makes sense. Thing of the Civil War destroyed temporarily all chances. Yeah, of the I have House a random aside like I'm going to interject here about Rothschild. Um, I was looking up just out of curiosity, like where the hell all the anti-Semitism claims and stuff originate for him. And just why everyone thinks he's their family's Illuminati and shit. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, the earliest they can find was a pamphlet that started being printed in 1846 uh -oh. by a guy named Georges Danvale, <laughs> uh, a pseudonym Satan, um, <laughs> that narrates the history of the Rothschild family's influence in Europe. And according to the this pamphlet, um, it said that Nathan Rothschild was involved in the Battle of Waterloo in June of 1815. Immediately after the battle, according to the pamphlet, he rushed to the Belgian coast and paid a fortune to cross the English Channel in the middle of a thunderstorm. Arrived in London 24 hours before the news of Napoleon's defeat was initially announced, and then basically bet on it and won a ton of money announcing the victory because he was there and rushed back. And so he and his brothers uh, made a total profit of 135 million francs. Jesus. Huh. And then so I looked up the dude who wrote the pamphlet, and he was just like some random French pamphleteer and journalist who went by Satan for funsies. <laughs> and uh, like they don't know who his parents are. They don't really know who he was. Oh and some some other person in the time, Frederick, uh, Frederick Engels, uh, some other person, uh, Frederick Engels, said that he started a new mode of attack against financiers where they have been obliged to publish two defenses against these attacks from a man who nobody knows and the whole of whose property consists in the suit of clothes he wears. <laughs> he basically just, this nobody woke up one day and was like, I'm going to fuck this dude shit up. Watch me. Because even though I have no shit, no influence, and he has started something that's still a headache to the Rothschild family to this day. That's hilarious. <laughs> also, for the record, Rothschild, Nathan Rothschild was nowhere near Waterloo. There was no storm during the English Channel at that time. Oh, that's that's that makes it even funnier. So even better. It was a total fabrication. They don't even have a picture of this pamphlet guy. They just have like a st standard drawing. Like, just some dude holding out pamphlets. <laughs> <laughs> just some dude. Oh my god. All right. Well, this is why I have you here because you like to do that quick research that really brings everything together. You've done more oh, research I'm gonna read in the you past. The whole, I'm going to read you the whole name of this pamphlet because it was in French originally and I'm not going to try that. No, that would But that the would, whole that title of it. Uh, his 36 page pamphlet against Rothschild, Out of Nowhere. Um, he has two of them, both 36 pages. The uh, first one, the edifying and curious history of Rothschild, the first king of the Jews. Oh. And the second one, uh, the response of Rothschild, the first king of the Jews, to Satan, the last king of imposters. So that was the response from the Rothschild family. <laughs> to <laughs> Satan, the last king of imposters. Dude, they, this pamphlet guy started a fucking Twitter flame war. In 1840-something. <laughs> That's great. The first troll. The first gamer. And that fucking led to the Rothschild being labeled forever Illuminati Jewish elite bankers <laughs> trying to take over the world. <laughs> That's amazing. Stupid bird app. Send me the link to that in the Discord. I I'd love to have that. That's hilarious. Okay, it's Britannica and Wikipedia. I'll send you both. Perfect. Both of those are terrible sources, but they're also good for just getting a good synopsis. You know what? I looked it up in like thirty seconds. Give me the fuck. No, up. no, no. I'm not. I'm not calling you out. I'm just saying, like, if we're gonna have standards against this guy, we have to have standards for ourselves in terms of just. Oh, look at me! I'm a college debater. I never debated topics off of Wikipedia and fucking oh, dude, I've debated topics. I once debated topics. 
I debated topics off worse than Wikipedia. Just random stuff I came up with in my own brain. Just say it with authority and people will leave you. Like this guy. Yeah, exactly. Like this crackpot. <laughs> Clutch on our money system, such as they had acquired in Britain and other nations in Europe. I say temporarily because the Rothschilds and the masterminds of the conspiracy never quit. So they had to start from scratch, but they lost no time in getting started. Shortly after the Civil War, a young immigrant who called himself Jacob H. Schiff arrived in New York. Jacob was a young man with a mission for the house of Rothschild. Jacob was the son of a rabbi born in one of Rothschild's houses in Frankfurt, Germany. I won't go deeply into his background, the important point is that Rothschild recognized in him not only a potential money wizard, but more important, he also saw the latent Machiavellian qualities in Jacob that could, wizard. as it did, make him an invaluable functionary in the great One World Conspiracy. Ah, one world After conspiracy. a comparatively brief training period in the Rothschild's London Bank, Jacob left for America with instructions to buy into a banking house, which was to be the springboard to acquire control of the money system of the United States. Actually, Jacob came here to carry out four specific assignments. Number one, and most important, was to acquire control of America's money system. Number two, find desirable men who, for a price, would be willing to serve as stooges for the great conspiracy and promote them into high places in our federal government, our Congress, in the U.S. Supreme Court, and all federal agencies. Number three, create minority... I'm going to go ahead and speed it up just a little bit because a lot of this is just filler and he's just basically explaining a plot that we've already debunked and just gone over about how it doesn't make any sense. I love how he's like, oh, he was sent over and, you know, just to do a couple of small things like take over the entire American financial right. system. Also to right. find some work. Right, just a really small, simple task for a dude that literally was just sat in a room for three weeks and was told what to do. <laughs> Like, if you could just sit, like, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to put this at one and a half speed so you can just kind of get a feel for how slow it feels at almost uh, at this fast. I mean, I want to know how this guy would have felt about Bezos. Oh, this dude would have been all over oh, how Bezos no. was a freaking Jew. 100%. 100%. I'm surprised there's not more conspiracy theories about Bezos. Group strike Be throughout Jeff the nation, Bezos is a whole particularly super villain. He looks white just and like Lex Luthor. Number he four, has that evil super Create a movement to destroy religion in the United States. 100%. But Christianity to be the chief target. Earlier, I stated that Jacob Schiff came to America with orders. Now he's speaking did like Did you guys hear what here. they did about Bezos when he went to space? Orders by Rothschild no. to carry out four specific directives. So Bezos did his little trip to space, one, right? To become an astronaut. System. It was privately funded, yeah. and then like two or three days after he got back, I think it was like NASA or some other like governmental international space agencies changed the definition of astronaut, so he would no longer qualify as an astronaut. That's amazing. Jacob bought a partnership and they firm that called itself Kuhn and Loeb. Like he came back with like, guys, look, I'm an astronaut by myself, and they were like, eh, we're gonna fix that real quick. Nope, not an astronaut anymore. Sorry, Bezos. That's awesome. Screw Bezos. That's some Sigma male shit. <laughs> Sigma is Sigma is a grind set. German Jewish ghettos. They came to the United States in the mid 1840s. Both started their business careers as itinerant pack peddlers. In the early 1850s, they pooled their interests and set up a merchandising store in Lafayette, Indiana, under the firm name of Kuhn and Loeb, servicing the covered wagon settlers on their way west. In the years that followed, they set up similar stores in Cincinnati and St. Louis. Then they added pawnbroking to their merchandising pursuits. From that to money lending was a short and quick step. By the time Schiff arrived on the scene, Kuhn and Loeb was a well-known private banking firm, and this is the firm Jacob bought into. Shortly after he became a partner in Kuhn and Loeb, Schiff married Loeb's daughter, Teresa. Then he bought out Kuhn's interest and moved the firm to New York, Teresa. and Kuhn USA and Loeb became Today, Kuhn, Loeb & Company, international bankers, agency. with Jacob Schiff, As an article, agent of the Rothschilds, ostensibly the sole owner. False claims that Jeff Bezos is an alien reptile drawn conspiracy the theory. Of the Illuminati, <laughs> great conspiracy in America, Posed as a generous the claim, there is an alien face in Jeff Bezos' neck, proving he's not human. They fact-checked that oh and posted God. it on their website this in is 2000. This is why people don't take them seriously. ...get full cooperation of the then big banker elements in America. And that was easier said than done. Even in those years, Wall Street was the heart of the American money mart, and J.P. Morgan was its dictator. Next in line 
where the Drexels and the Biddles in Philadelphia, all the other financiers, big and little, danced to the music of those three houses, but particularly to that of Morgan. All of those three were proud, haughty, arrogant potentates. For the first few years, they viewed the little bewhiskered man from the German ghettos with utter contempt. Bewhiskered. But Jacob knew how to overcome that. He threw a few Rothschild bones to them, said bones being distribution in America of desirable European stock and... See, he's just saying words. He's not actually saying anything substantial. He's just saying he threw some bones at them, right? Like, he's just like, yeah, what were they? And it gave them opportunities in the man manufacturing industry. What opportunities? He's not actually giving examples. He's just saying words. It, it, there's nothing substantial to it. He's just like he offered them favors in the in the mechanical industry or in this and get to get them richer. It's like that's nothing substantial. That's just words, dude. <laughs> what is this dude's name again? Uh, Myron Fagan. M Y R O N F A G A N. Bond issues. Then he discovered he had a still more potent weapon in his hands in the following. It was in the decades following our civil war that our industries began to burgeon. We had great railroads to build, the oil, mining. It was during the civil war and before the civil war that our industries began, began to boom. Uh, our industries were so big during the civil war that during the war we built one of the best ironclads ever built for that time period. And it never saw combat in the civil war. It was actually shipped to Italy because Italy bought it. And this was in 1863. Yeah, the United I remember States industry about that. was so powerful that it was building enough war material and machines to fund its own war and supply other nations. The U.S. industry did not boom after the war. It boomed during the war and just before it. Saying it was booming after the war is true, but saying that after the war is when it started its boom is false. So saying that people that this conspiracy started after the war because they were taking advantage of a suddenly booming industry in America is false because they would have had to get on board during the Civil War or right after, not in the 1880s and 90s. On top of that, J.P. Morgan wasn't a huge figure in the American economic world until the late 1890s when he showed his power during an almost economic crisis that was similar to the 1929 crash that he effectively stopped by using his power while he was playing solitaire. <clears throat> and he basically gave these politicians a deal, and he's like, accept or don't. If you accept my deal, I'll stop this. And he played solitaire while the entire stock market almost crashed. That was when people realized how powerful he was. Not in the 1890s, where this guy is talking about. So again, basic research in history shows you that this is just all completely bogus. Steel, textile industries were bursting out of their swaddling. Bogus, dude. Top completely bogus, my guy. Also, textile it's industries so bogus, in the United bro. States. Textile industries in the United States were booming before the Civil War and actually had a slump after the Civil War due to decreased cotton production for reasons that we still don't know why the cotton production slumped after the Civil War. There must have been something that happened that caused cotton production to go down. I wonder what that was. And the aluminum already started wearing a lot more cotton. Well, cotton production it went down after the, the, the cotton world. production went down after the war. Probably because all the slaves are freed or something. I'm not too sure. No, it's probably no. because the Illuminati took all the cotton and didn't want to guard anymore because it was a status symbol that they could be cool and calm and collected while taking over the world in the heat. Oh, that's true. All that called for vast financing. Much of that financing had to come from abroad. That meant the House of Rothschild. Abroad. And that was when Schiff came into his own. He played a very crafty game. He became the patron saint of John D. Rockefeller, Edward R. Harriman, and Andrew Carnegie. He financed the Standard Oil Company for Rocky, the railroad empire for Harriman, and the steel empire for Carnegie. But instead of hogging all the other industries for Kuhn, Loeb, and company, he opened the doors of the House of Rothschild to Morgan, Biddle, and Drexel. See, this part is kind of true, because the Standard Oil Company and the railroads, they became huge monopolies, and they were bankrolled by other banks, and then they become, became so powerful they didn't need the banks after that. And they're actually why there's a huge like anti-monopoly sentiment in early American history, because these companies were so powerful and so evil. It's a lot like how Amazon is today. So they're, again, like I said, nuggets of truth and everything. It's just that this guy's a crackpot and shouldn't be taken seriously. In turn, Rothschild arranged the setting up of London, Paris, European, and other branches for those three, but always in partnerships with Rothschild subordinates. And Rothschild made it very clear to all those men that Schiff was to be the boss in New York. Thus, at the turn of the century, Schiff had a tight control of the entire banking fraternity on Wall Street which by then, with Schiff's help, included Lehman Brothers, Goldman Sachs, and other internationalist banks, headed by men chosen by the Rothschilds. In short, that meant control of the nation's money powers, and he was then ready for the giant step, the entrapment of our national money system. Now, under our Constitution, all control 
of our money system is vested solely in our Congress. Schiff's next important step was to seduce our Congress to betray that constitutional edict by surrendering that control to the hierarchy of the Illuminati's great conspiracy. In this order to utilize that surrender and thus make the people powerless no, to resist it, it would be necessary to have Congress enact special like, legislation. I'm getting bored to hearing accomplish this that, Schiff would have to infiltrate Stooges Honestly. into both houses of Congress. Stooges powerful enough just, to railroad Congress into like, passing such it's legislation. It's not entertaining. Equal, even more important, doesn't keep, he would have to plant the Stooges in the White talking. House. Well, the problem is, is that he's not saying anything. He's just rambling, right? He's not even like saying anything of yeah. substance. He's not saying, he's not giving actual examples. He's just saying, so-and-so got into power. So-and-so got into power. So-and-so got into power. Thanks to so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so on. And so on. And it's like, well, what's the story? How did they get in power? Explain that. No, you're not going to because it, you don't know because it wasn't because of a conspiracy. That's why it's boring. It actually gets more fun. It gets funny like when he starts talking about the civil rights movement. And I'm just kind of waiting for it. I forget when he mentions it. And I think it's soon, but I might skip forward a bit. So, A president without integrity and without scruples who would sign that legislation into law. Scruples. To accomplish that, he had to get control of either the Republican or the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party was the more vulnerable. It was the hungrier of the two parties. Except for Grover Cleveland, the Democrats had been unable to land one of their men in the White House since before the Civil War. There were two reasons for that. Number one, poverty of the party. Number two, there were considerably more Republican-minded voters than Democrats. The poverty matter was you not... You guys want to go back to normal speed real quick just to see how slow he actually talks? Oh, God. A great right, problem. Sure. But the voter problem was a different story. But as I previously Man, said, up, Schiff was a up. smart cook. <laughs> Here is the atrocious and murderous method to debate. solve that voter problem. <laughs> the solution emphasizes how very little the Jewish internationalist bankers care so about slow. their own racial brethren, as you shall see. Suddenly, around 1890, there broke out I a nationwide a series of pogroms right in Russia. Time. Many, many I thousands won't. of innocent Jews, men, women, and children it's were slaughtered bomb. by the Cossacks and other peasants. Similar pogroms with similar slaughter Hold of innocent Jews broke Florida out in Rising. Poland, Romania, and Bulgaria. <laughs> All those pogroms were fomented by Rothschild also, agents. Someone put in As chat, a result, Jewish terrified in the chat, He's like, "Do you realize nobody is listening?" Yeah, I don't care, bud. I'm li I'm I'm hanging out with friends. That's what matters. From this is our social life. Leave us the fuck yeah. alone. God I damn. just wanted to go off and dunk on this video with friends, and I figured I'd stream it because it'd be fun. And I've been inactive from YouTube, so screw off, bud. It's okay, just killing with the said, homies, I, man. Ron, yeah. So I'm done eating with you, friends. I'm sorry. The United States, and that actually, I'm not your friend. Sorry. Wow. Oh, okay, that's right. You can't. You can't be friends with diabetes. That's right. Quaint. For three decades, <laughs> all those Rothschild-style <laughs> 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 humanitarian committees set up by Schiff, the Rothschilds, and all the Rothschild affiliates. In the main. Also, I'll put the link to this video in the description of this live stream once it's done. The ref other large cities, right. such as Chicago, Boston, Philadelphia, Detroit, Los Angeles, etc. All of them were quickly transformed Whoa. into naturalized citizens and educated to register as Democrats. Who's gone? Thus, oh, it's all a of diabetic. that so-called minority group became solid Democratic voter blocks in their oh, no, communities. Oh no, not the diabetic! All controlled and maneuvered by their so-called the diabetic is gone. And shortly after oh, the turn no. of the century, they became vital factors in the political life of our nation. It's probably going to go spread that was diabetes. One of the Schiff employed. To plant men like Nelson Aldrich in our Senate and Woodrow Wilson in the White House. At this point, let me remind you of another Wilson. of the important yes, jobs that seriously. they assigned to Schiff when he was dispatched to America. I refer to the job of destroying the unity of the American people by creating minority group and racial strife. By the pogrom of Jewish gay. refugees into America, yep. Schiff was creating one ready made minority group for that purpose. But the Jewish people, as a whole, made fearful by the pogroms, could not be depended upon to create the violence necessary to destroy the unity of the American people. But right within America, there was an already made to order, although as yet a sleeping minority group, the Negroes. Oh, who could here be it sparked is. Oh, here it is. Right here we go. Under every other type of lawlessness. All that was necessary was to incite and arouse them. Together, Hang on, where's, those two where's minority that groups properly maneuvered. He left. We got to get him back here. He's talking about... I feel like I'm just listening to an old man just <laughs> rant on and rant on we before he eventually the, croaks. He finally got the racially charged bit just as the diabetic leaves. Just as we hit the gamer moment where it's hilarious to listen to because of how horrible it is. The diabetic leaves. Ugh. 
Can't have shit in Detroit. Can't have anything in Detroit. I bought this dude's tires. <laughs> Alfonso. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. All right, I'm going to reach out to him real quick and just ask if he'll be back because we just reached the... I'm a domestic terrorist. <laughs> Call me Dennis because I'm a menace. <laughs> you're gonna join back i'm trying to get him back in before before uh before we play it again i'm waiting for him to respond mm -hmm. i don't think he can join damn he's gonna miss the best part honestly all right back to it all right let's that's a goal. Could be used to create exactly the kind of strife in America the Illuminati would need to accomplish their objective. Thus, at the same time that Schiff and his co-conspirators were laying their plans for the entrapment of our money system, they were also perfecting plans to hit the unsuspecting American people with an explosive and terrifying racial upheaval that would tear the people into hate fractions and create chaos throughout the nation, especially on all college and university campuses, all protected by Earl Warren decisions and our so-called leaders in Washington. Of course, perfecting those plans require time and infinitely patient organizing. Now, to remove all doubts, I'll take a few moments to give you documentary proof of this racial strife plot. First of uh, all, they had to create proof. leaderships and organizations to draw in millions of dupes, both Jewish and Negroes, uh -oh. who would do the demonstrating there we go. and commit the rioting, looting, and lawlessness. So in 1909, Schiff, the Laymans, and other conspirators <laughs> organized and set up the National Association for the Advancement of the Colored People, known as the NAACP. The presidents, directors, and legal counsels of the NAACP we were had a always spike white in men. Viewers as soon Jews as we appointed the by Schiff. Charged and this oh is the case of this very day. Here we go. Then in 1913, we organized the they, anti defamation they heard, League of the Benevolent. They felt the game were just emanating ADL from the video. To serve as the Gestapo and the Hatchet Man outfit the for the entire great energy. conspiracy. Today, this sinister ADL is maintains over 2,000 agencies in all parts of the country. Racism pays. And they advise and completely control every action of the NAACP, core of the Urban League, of all the other so-called Negro civil rights organizations uh -oh. throughout the nation, including oh. such leaders as Martin Lucifer King, Stokely Carter. Oh, he oh. said it, he said it, he said the word. <laughs> okay, let's, let's listen to that one more time. Let's listen, Shh, let's listen to that one more time. NAACP, core of the Urban League, of all the other so-called Negro civil rights organizations throughout the nation, including such leaders as Martin Lucifer King, <laughs> Stokely Carmichael, <laughs> Bayard Rustin, and others of that Martin ilk. Lucifer King. In addition, the ADL acquired absolute... King. Hey, Frycor, how does that make you feel after listening to this? I, I'm just wondering... I, I'm almost wondering if that was intentional or if he was just if he's just so far in left field that it just slipped out. No, like, no, that he <laughs> calls him that. He calls him that a lot. He specifically calls him that on purpose. Oh, my God. <laughs> he... Uh, <laughs> like <laughs> he emphasizing everything else except the one thing he probably should want to emphasize considering what he's talking about like he emphasizes certain letters and words when he's speaking but doesn't emphasize the thing that he wants people to know <laughs> Martin Lucifer King <laughs> Martin Lucifer King this dude is a freaking crackpot, dude. It's hilarious. Wait until he starts talking about interracial marriages. It's great. Oh, oh, control oh, no. the advertising budgets <laughs> of many department stores, hotel chains, and TV and radio industrialist sponsors, also advertising agencies, in order to control practically all the mass communications media and force every loyal newspaper to slant and falsify the news and to further incite and at the same time create sympathy for the lawlessness and violence of the Negro mobs. Here is documentary uh -oh. proof of the beginning of their deliberate plot documentary to foment proof. the Negroes into all their lawlessness. Around 1910, one Israel Zangwill wrote a play entitled The Melting Pot. It was sheer propaganda to incite the Negroes and Jews because the play purportedly visualized how the American people were discriminating against and persecuting Jews and Negroes. At that time, nobody seemed to realize that it was a propaganda play. It was that cleverly written. The propaganda. So he's saying that a play written to show like the terrible way that Jews and blacks have been treated in America is propaganda 
specifically to make blacks and Jews upset at the way they're being treated and make them want to be treated equally. And that's a huge plot to force communism because according to this guy, and don't clip this, my God, I would be ruined. According to this guy, <laughs> minorities do not deserve to be treated as equals. According to this person. No, no, stop it. it. (laughs) Clip it. Clip it. (laughs) But no, it's it's like, it's like according to this guy, that's what that, that's what that whole thing is. Like this, this whole play critiquing the way that uh, racial minorities are treated in America is like some plot. To to completely destroy <laughs> the f- fabric of society. And it was well wrapped up. Clips. And the truly now great going entertainment to get in the play, no. and it was a big Broadway no. hit. Now in those years, the legendary Diamond Jim Brady <laughs> used to throw a banquet at the famous Delmonico restaurant Tom in New York Brady. after the Hell opening no. performance of a popular play. Tom Brady's immortal. He threw such a party for the cast of the Melting Pot, its author, producer, and chosen Broadway celebrities. By then, I'd already made a personal mark on the Broadway theater and was invited to that party. There I met George Bernard Shaw and a Jewish writer named Israel Cohen. Zangwill Shaw Did and Cohen. Did he say that he made tried- a significant mark? Yeah, so he was part of the uh he was on Broadway and stuff in a playwright and he did he was well known enough to get into this party. So he's trying to say like because he was at the party everything he says about this is 100% true, which I mean, based on his previous uh accuracy, I'm just going to take everything he says with a grain of salt. The Umbrella who created the a Fabian Society in England and had worked closely with a Frankfurt Jew named Mordecai who had changed his name to Karl Marx. But remember, at that time, both Marxism and communism were just emerging, and nobody paid much attention to either, and nobody suspected the propaganda in the writings of those three really brilliant writers. At that banquet, Israel Cohn told me he was then engaged in writing a book which was to be a follow-up on Zangwill's The Melting Pot. The title of his book was to be a racial program for the 20th century. At that time, I was completely absorbed by my work as a playwright, and significant as that title was, its real objective never dawned on me, nor was I interested in reading the book. But it suddenly hit me with the force of a hydrogen bomb when I received Communism a newspaper clipping just of an item published by the Washington, D.C. Evening Star in May 1957. That item was a verbatim reprint of the following excerpt in Israel Cohen's book, A Racial Program for the 20th Century. And it reads as I quote, We must realize that our party's most powerful weapon is racial tension. By propounding into the consciousness of the dark races that for centuries they have been oppressed by the whites, we can mold them to the program of the Communist Party. In America, we will aim for subtle victory. While inflaming the Negro minority against the whites, we will instill in the whites a guilt complex for their exploitation of the Negroes. We will aid the Negroes to rise to prominence in every walk of life, in the professions and in the world of sports and entertainment. With this prestige, the Negro will be able to intermarry with the whites and begin a process which will deliver America to our cause. (laughs) He's literally like, we're going to bring up the past of how poorly they've been treated to make them want a better life. And we're going to use it to cause guilt so that the people who historically have treated them poorly will want to write that. And then we're going to allow them to actually enter the world of sports, which at this point they weren't allowed to join because of racial segregation. And this is going to allow them to intermarry. And all of this is a satanic plot. Because man, <laughs> like, what in the world? It's absolutely bonkers. I, I, I don't. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. Because like, he's he's just. <laughs> Brian, Corey, you got I, anything? I'm just listening to some. Oh, it's just it's it's just it's just one big gaff. It, it's literally <laughs> the world's like longest recorded gaff. <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. bro it's just Matt, a prank. This says it's all a joke, of that. Guys. Don't worry, it's just a joke. Oh my this God. is all just made as a just fun and games. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Hello, everybody joining. We just hit nine viewers again. Um, Let's go. Welcome. You are, guys are all joining as we hit the racially charged portion of our programming. That same How excerpt funny. was entered into the congressional record of June 7, 1957 by Representative Thomas G. Abernathy. Thus, the authenticity of that Abernathy. passage of Cohen's book was fully established. But the one question that remained in my mind was whether it represented the official policy or plot of the Communist Party or just a personal expression of Cohen himself. Hence, I sought more proof. And I found it. 
in an official pamphlet published in 1935 by the New York Communist Party's official Workers' Library Publishers. That pamphlet was entitled, The Negroes in a Soviet America. It urged the Negroes to rise up, form a Soviet state in the South, and apply for admission to the Soviet Union. It contained a firm pledge that the revolt would be supported by all American Reds and all so-called liberals. On page 38, it promised that a Soviet government would confer greater benefits to Negroes than to whites. And it's almost as if the Soviet Union and America were diplomatic competitors and the Soviet Union saw America was struggling with its racial tensions and tried to use that to bring America into more division and bring it down. It's almost like they didn't like each other. Right. And it's almost That's as if crazy. early Soviet um, groups were actually super pro-equality. Because that's what communism is like. That's what the basis theory is, is like everyone's supposed to be equal. I mean, it fails because it plays off of it assumes that everyone's going to do their job right <clears throat> and isn't going to be selfish. But the whole basis is that people are treated equally. Like that's part of the that's the main point is that you don't treat one person worse because of their race. It's basically just it, it just falls apart when you try to take away the whole. The, the idea that man is inherently selfish. If man wasn't inherently selfish, then this video would not exist. And again, this official communist pamphlet pledged that, I quote, any act of discrimination or prejudice against a Negro will become a crime under the revolutionary law, unquote. That statement proved that the excerpt in Israel Cohen's book, published in 1913, was an official edict of the Communist Party and directly in line with the Illuminati blueprint or world revolution issued by Weishaupt and later by Albert Pike. Now there's only one question, and that is to prove that the communist regime is directly controlled by the American Jacob Schiff and London Rothschild masterminds of the great conspiracy. A little later, I will provide that proof that will remove even a remote doubt that the communist party as we know it was created by those masterminds, capitalists if you will note, that Schiff, the Warburg and the Rothschilds planned and financed the entire Russian revolution, also the murder of the Tsar and his family, and that Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin took their orders directly from Schiff and the other capitalists whom they supposedly are fighting. I want to just remind everybody who's here and might not have heard it before, this guy is a start, help, was one of the main proponents of the early Red Scare in the late 40s because Hollywood, um, because Hollywood wouldn't accept one of his crackpot plays dissing FDR for his policies uh, during the meetings in Yalta. So, um, yeah, he's just a bitter playwright that went into full crackpot mode. Now can you see why the vile Earl Warren and his equally vile co-Supreme Court justices issued that infamous and treasonous desegregation decision in 1954? It was to aid and abet the plot of the Illuminati conspirators to create tension and strife between Negro How much more do we have? Can you see why the same Earl Warren <laughs> issued his decision prohibiting Christian prayers Man, and Christmas carols in our schools? He doesn't stop it talking! It was done to destroy no, Christianity. He doesn't. Can you see why Eisenhower, despite all the rigid constitutional prohibitions, sent federal troops into a southern state to enforce the desegregation decision. Why Kennedy did likewise. And can you see why Johnson and 66 senators, despite the protests of 90% of the American people, voted for the consular treaty, which opens our entire country to Russian spies and saboteurs. All those 66 senators are 20th century Benedict Arnolds. It is up to you and you, all of the American people, to force Congress, our elected servants, to haul in those American traitors for impeachment. Call your congressman. And that when proven guilty, Tell they no all be given be the punishment the prescribed for traitors who aid and abet our enemies. Don't worry. And that listen. includes I'm the sure forcing of rigid investigations sure by Congress, uh, of the called? CFR, and all their fronts, I'm sure such as be the like, ADL, yeah, the okay, NAACP, bar. SNCC, and such Illuminati tools as Martin Luther King. Such there it is again. There it is again. <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> he said the phrase. He said it. He said the line. <laughs> he said the line. <laughs> Say the line, Bart. Martin Lucifer King. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is, this, line, guy is un, this guy is unironically car calling Martin Luther King Jr. a Satanist for for uh trying to have equal rights in America. Oh, you're trying to end Jim Crow and have like minorities treated just as good as white people? You're a Satanist. Oh, you're trying to allow black people into sports and into movies and into like allowing, you know, minorities to enter racially marriage with white people? You are a Satanist. Like what is this? What is this? That's not how that works. Will completely unmask all the leaders in Washington and the Illuminati and all their affiliations <laughs> cool. and affiliates as traitors it's carrying out the Illuminati plot. Uh, it will completely unmask the United Nations as the intended crux of the entire plot 
and force Congress to take the U.S. out of the U.N. and hurl the U.N. out of the U.S. In fact, it will destroy the U.N. and the entire plot. Before I close this phase, I wish to reiterate and stress one vital point, which I urge you to never forget if you wish to save our country for your children and their children. Here is the point. Every unconstitutional and unlawful act committed by Woodrow Wilson, by Franklin Roosevelt, by Truman, Eisenhower, and Kennedy, and are now being committed by Johnson, is exactly in line with the Illuminati conspirators' centuries-old plot outlined by Weishaupt and Albert Pike. Every vicious decision issued by the traitorous Earl Warren and his equally traitorous Supreme Court justices was directly in line with what the Illuminati blueprint required, that all the treason committed by our State Department under Rusk and earlier by John Forster, Dulles, and Marshall <coughs> Also, all that for the takeover of the world. I'm going to start skipping ahead a little bit because this guy just loves to stay on the same subject and say nothing about it for like a long time. So pardon me. I will put the link to the video in everything just because. Um, He's just been repeating himself. Just in case for someone wants to hours. actually listen to the full thing, like if you're that much of a machicist. But um, I'm going to skip ahead a bit just for time's sake who sign go back to jacob Schiff's entrapment of our money if you love hurting the yourself you can watch the follow. video yeah. it will also reveal aided the revolution in russia and set up the communist party chief lieutenants in that seizure were colonel edward mandel house show bernard baruch and herbert layman in the at jekyll island georgia among those present were jp vanderlip of the new york national city bank w and j seligman eugene meyer bernard baruch herbert layman paul warburg in short all of the international bankers in america all of them members of the hierarchy of the Illuminati's great conspiracy. A week later, they emerged with what they called the Federal Reserve System. Senator Aldrich was the stooge who was to railroad it through Congress. But they held that railroading in abeyance for one chief reason. They would first have to plant airman, an obedient stooge, in the White House to sign no, the Federal I, Reserve Act into law. I can't they knew take that him even seriously when he uses the word stooge. <laughs> <laughs> They're all stooges, every last one of them. Pass that act unanimously. They're all the stooges the working under his devious plan. So all they of waited. Them are stooges. In 1912, stooges. their man, Woodrow Wilson, was elected to the presidency. <laughs> Immediately after Wilson was inaugurated, Senator okay, all right, all right. I'm going to pause it here. Let's just real quick say that we are slightly on the same page with this guy because we all hate Wilson. Everyone hates Wilson. Woodrow Wilson was a terrible person. Who likes Wilson? Yeah, I've never met anyone who likes Woodrow Wilson. Liberals hate him. Conservatives hate him. Centrists hate him. He was just bad. The dude was not a good person. So <clears throat> we'll all sit here, hold hands, and agree that Woodrow Wilson was a horrible person who was in the pocket of the manufacturers who wanted to enter World War I. He literally declared war on Germany right after getting inaugurated. He was a terrible human being. He was anti. He was anti women's voting rights until it almost cost him his presidency. He was anti civil rights. He was. He was just a terrible, awful human being. In, okay. What? So, so Wilson Wilson only got in just because there was a Republican split because Taft was Republican, and then and then um, Roosevelt wanted to go back in as Republican, but they he didn't get um he didn't get the Republican. He didn't get the nomination, so he started the Volmos party. So then there was a Republican split, so then that, that, that almost kind of sealed the Democratic victory. That's pretty much what happened. Yeah. And then he only won the next election because he was just like, I promise to keep us out of the war, and then immediately got America involved in the war. Yeah, I was about and, to and say, the entire thing was that he was going to keep us out of the war, but he, he didn't. He ran on the platform of he kept America out of the war. Because at the time, Roosevelt and all the Republicans were calling for war. Roosevelt was a huge, huge supporter of the idea that America should get on the side of a Britain. And he had been saying that since the opening of the war. And that's mainly because Roosevelt was um, a huge imperialist and believed that he the war could be used for American gains. I, I'm... I'm going to say I'm not a fan of Teddy Roosevelt. I understand people who are, and I get that. I think that a lot of his domestic policies with, like, national forests were awesome. But his uh, his diplomatic dealings were terrible. He was a huge imperialist and kind of screwed over the world. And because of that, he was a huge proponent for the war. And so were a bunch of Republicans because they all, you know, he, they all they all basically licked his boots. So Republicans were running on the campaign to start a war. And... To win the war, they were basically – to win the election, Woodrow Wilson's party was basically like, hey, we've kept you guys out of the war and we'll continue to do that because that's what we've done. And then he gets elected and gets uh, put into power and he instantly starts the war. He instantly gets involved.
Woodrow Wilson was was a terrible human being. The Federal Reserve Act and, through both houses of Congress. What? And and he also he also created like the League of Nations without Congress's approval or whatever. Right. Like they had a vote on it and they voted no. We're we're staying out of this. He's like, okay, I'm going to do it anyways. Right. And then they only kept America out of it because he didn't have enough time before the end of his presidency to do anything. So no, he was he was he was just an awful, terrible person who abused his presidency's control and went far and beyond. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that he was also operating with the within the interests of manufacturers who were losing money because of this U-boat war, um, because a lot of their product was sinking, and Britain was not wanting to pay for that if it sank in transit to Britain. So they were losing money and losing their resources. And, and he smells like this. Promptly signed it. And the Federal Reserve Act became law. That heinous act of treason was committed in December 23, 1913, two days before Christmas, when all the members of Congress, except for several carefully picked representatives and three equally carefully picked senators, were away from Washington. How heinously treasonous was that act? I'll tell you. Our founding fathers knew full well the power of money. They knew that whoever had that power held the destiny of our nation in his hands. Therefore, they carefully guarded this power when they set forth <laughs> in the Constitution that Congress, the elected representatives of the people alone would have that power. The constitutional language on this point is brief, concise, and specific. Stated in Article 1, Section 8, Paragraph 5, defining the... Oh yeah, he also created the Federal Reserve in order just to print a bunch of money to fund his own ideas. So, yeah, I agree with him on this point. The Federal Reserve is terrible because it just gives the government power to print money and just to create currency with no reason. So yeah, even further proof that Woodrow Wilson was a cuck. Duties and powers of Congress, and I quote, to coin money, regulate the value thereof, and a foreign coin, and the standard of weights and measures, unquote. But on that tragic, unforgettable day of infamy, December 23, 1913, the men we sent to Washington to safeguard our interests, the representatives and senators and Woodrow Wilson, delivered the destiny of our nation into the hands of two aliens from Eastern Europe, Jacob Schiff aliens. and Paul Warburg. Warburg was a very recent immigrant. Here's the thing, though. At this point in time, America had been built on the foundation of immigrants. So it wasn't uncommon to see that. It would only be uncommon now and in the 60s. So from his perspective in the 60s, yeah, it's uncommon. But he has no concept of perspective. He's looking at everything through the lens of someone from his time rather than looking at it from the lens of that time period, thus creating the issue. So, yeah. Who came here on orders from Rothschild for the express purpose of blueprinting that foul Here's Federal Rothschild. Reserve Act. Now, the vast majority of the American people think that the Federal Reserve System is a United States government owned agency. That is positively false. All of the stock of the Federal Reserve Banks is owned by the member banks, and the heads of the member banks are all members of the hierarchy of the great Illuminati conspiracy known. See, the Federal Reserve is owned by a conglomerate of banks because. The idea was that they would know how to properly regulate the money. That was the whole concept behind it, while giving the government the ability to regulate the currency, but given in control of the bank so that the government didn't screw it up. That was sort of the idea behind it. So, yeah, it is true that the Federal Reserve is controlled, i.e. the approval system goes through the hands of, multi of the banks that would have the best interests in keeping the dollar from losing value, but the orders to the Federal Reserve are given by the government. But those banks... He's just like, and those banks are controlled by the Rothschilds, which isn't true. You can simply look at the, you can look at the rabbit trail and the fact that the Rothschilds aren't actually a powerful family. So, again, he's just he's just creating things out of thin air to further his own conspiracy and how things work, which isn't how it works. Today, as the CFR, the details of that act of treason in for which like many traders, so-called Americans, participated are far too long yeah. for this recording. But all those details are available in a book entitled "The Federal Reserve Conspiracy." Written by you. Oh, the Federal Reserve Conspiracy. That's where you're getting your source from. That's such a great source, dude. Thank you. You're getting a source for a that conspiracy book tells from the another entire conspiracy. Horrifying story right. and That's backs it up works. with unquestionable documentations. Aside from it being a truly fascinating and shocking story of that great betrayal, that book, Mullen, every American should read it as a matter of vital intelligence for the time when the whole American people will finally come awake and smash the entire conspiracy. And with God's help, that awakening will surely come. You can get a copy. Of that book from the publishers who think that those them you're in for another very sad shock the federal reserve system gave the conspirators complete control of our money system but it in no way touched the earnings of the people because the constitution positively forbids what is now known as the 20 percent withholding tax but the illuminati blueprint for one world enslavement 
called for the confiscation of all private property and control of individual earning powers. People nowadays own more private property than people at any other point in history, so they suck at taking away private property. This, and Karl Marx stressed that feature in his blueprint, had to be accomplished by a progressive graduated income tax. You know, you have to reach a certain point of prosperity to believe stuff like this. You don't have time at any other point. You only have time to do that when you reach a certain level of societal prosperity to where you could have stuff like this even be a thing. So the fact that you're even being able to discuss it immediately disproves the idea that they're trying to take away your private property. He's got too much time on his hands. He does. Too much time and drugs. That As too. I stated, such Especially a tax could not lawfully also, be imposed upon the American- Also, someone disliked the live stream. So apparently someone doesn't like the fact that we're debunking an Illuminati theory. I hope he unsubscribed too, because I don't want someone like that in this community. If I hope they weren't subscribed. Good. You just like the video because, like, oh, we're debunking this crackpot Illuminati theory. Get Don't say Gelly. American people, it is succinctly and expressly forbidden by our Constitution. Thus, only an amendment to the Constitution could give the federal government such confiscatory powers. Well, that too was not an insurmountable problem for our Machiavellian that plot. That dude who said no one the was watching deleted his comment. Both houses of Congress. <laughs> and the same Mr. Woodrow Wilson, who signed the infamous Federal Reserve Act into law, amended the Constitution to make the federal income tax, known as the 16th Amendment, a law of the land. Both are illegal under our Constitution. In short, the same traitors signed both betrayals, the Federal Reserve Act and the 16th Amendment, into law. Hold on, However, right it back. seems I'm that get nobody ever drink. realized that the 16th Amendment was set up to rob, and I do mean rob, the people of their earnings via the income tax provision. The plotters didn't fully use that provision until World War II, when that great humanitarian, Franklin Roosevelt, applied a 20% withholding tax on all small wage earners and up to 90% on higher incomes. Oh, of course, he faithfully promised that it would be only for the duration of the war. But what was a promise to such a charlatan who in 1940, when he was running for his third... Okay, so income tax in the United States. He's saying that this was first put up during World War II. That's false. Income tax was actually first initiated by Abraham Lincoln in order to pay for the Civil War. Um, it was then brought up during 1913 when there was uh, when the U.S. had some debt, um, and then brought up during World War One to help pay for that war, and then was made into a standard after World War Two, because a lot of things that were brought up as temporary during World War Two just kind of stuck around because the government became super bloated. So it's not some plot. He's saying that Lincoln was like an agent against the Rothschilds, even though Abraham Lincoln is the one who created the first income tax. So Abraham Lincoln even created the IRS. So, yeah, I, he, disproving himself just because he, he, he loves uh, Lincoln so much. Um, but Lincoln created the first income tax in American history and the IRS as temporary institutions during the Civil War third term kept proclaiming, I say again and again and again that I will never send American boys to fight on foreign soil. Remember? He was proclaiming that even as he was already preparing to plunge us into World War II by enticing the Japanese into that sneak attack on Pearl Harbor to furnish him with his excuse. And before I forget, let me remind you that another charlatan named Woodrow Wilson used exactly that same campaign slogan in 1916. His slogan was, you know, the idea that the United States enticed Japan to attack Pearl Harbor is such an overdone conspiracy. It's kind of stupid. The U.S. was taking stances against Japan, and those stances definitely led Japan to be forced into a corner to attack the United States. But it was far from Roosevelt trying to get involved in the war. Now, Churchill, in his book, The Second World War, flat out says that Franklin Roosevelt had planned and wanted to get involved in the war to support Britain because him and Churchill were really good friends and he really liked Britain and he kind of wanted to support Britain in the war against Germany. But saying that he did all of those policies with congressional approval because he was trying to entice Japan to attack Pearl Harbor, there's no basis for it. He was actually trying to entice Germany to declare war by having the undeclared war where uh, American destroyers were attacking German submarines, which were attacking British ships. So... Yeah, he, he just, he again, falls flat on his face. The argument he could make, he didn't make, and instead he makes an argument that disproves his whole idiotic theory. Was re elect the man who will take your sons out of the war. Let's exactly go. the same formula. Exactly. That helps protect you against the Illuminati. Exactly the same promises. 
They actually injected tin foil Joseph into Cranberry you ain't heard to help protect yet. you from the Illuminati. That 16th Amendment yes. income tax trap was intended to confiscate, rob, the earnings only of the common herd, you and me. It was not intended to even touch the huge incomes of the Illuminati gang, the Rockefellers, the Carnegies, the Laymans, and all the other conspirators. So together with that 16th Amendment, they created what they called the tax-free foundations. That would enable the conspirators to transform their huge wealth into such so-called foundations and avoid payment of virtually all income taxes. I mean, he's not completely the wrong. They had loopholes specifically because the rich had a lot of power in the government. But this is not because there's some great conspiracy to control the world. It's just because the rich have a lot of power. That's how the world works. It sucks, but I mean, that's how it is. Use for it was that the earnings of those tax free foundations would be devoted to humanitarian philanthropy. So we now have the several Rockefeller foundations, the Carnegie Endowment Fund, the Ford Foundation, the Mellon Foundation, and hundreds of similar tax free foundations. The Mellon Foundation. And what kind of Young philanthropy watermelon. do these foundations support? Well, Man, they finance all the civil rights groups that are creating all the chaos does. and rioting all over the country. They finance the Martin Lucifer Kings. The Ford Foundation <laughs> finances <laughs> the Center for the Study of there Democratic Institutions in Santa Barbara, commonly referred to as Moscow West, and which is headed by Wonder Boy Hutchins, Walter Ruther, Wonder Erwin Cannon, and others of that field. In short, the tax-free foundation finance Little those who are doing Boy. the job for the Illuminati Great Conspiracy. And what are the hundreds of billions of dollars they confiscate every year from the earnings of the common herd, you and me, used for. Well, for one thing, there's the foreign aid gimmick, which gave billions to communist Tito, plus gifts of hundreds of jet planes, many of which were turned over to Castro, plus the costs of training communist pilots so that they can the better shoot down our planes, billions to Red Poland, billions to India, billions to Sukarno, billions to other enemies of the United States. That's what that treasonously railroaded 16th Amendment has done to our nation, to the American people, to you and to me, to your children and their children. Our CFR Illuminati-controlled federal government can grant tax-free status to... It's like he doesn't understand what the Cold War is, where we were actively trying to vie for influence over nations to try to win them over to the United States by, doing, uh, by giving them aid, saying, hey, we'll give you this stuff, now you help us. And they're like, ha psych, no, we're not going to join you. We got Soviets. Like, wow, you completely misread your own time period. All foundation are you, and pro red the, one word outfits. This dude was as the fun for alive the during the they Cold War, and he doesn't even understand it because he thinks that it's all the Illuminati. Pro American, they can terrify and intimidate you by finding a misplaced comma in your income tax report and by threatening you with penalties. He thinks everything is the Illuminati. He's probably, he, he probably think McDonald's is a huge fraud by the Illuminati so to fatten up Americans and make us stupid as to have permitted oh, he would believe such that. audaciously brazen acts of treason as the Federal Reserve Act in the 16th Amendment. You know, well, they were there are probably right. people that actually believe that now. He'd probably blow a cap to see YouTube. He'd be like, this is this is a plot to dumb down people. About either betrayal until after <laughs> each one had been accomplished. It was the Illuminati-controlled mass communications media that kept and is keeping our people naive and stupid and unaware of the treason being committed. Now he the great question me is, stupid. when will the no. people wake up and do to our traitors of today I wake up every what morning, George Washington though. and our founding fathers would have done to Benedict Arnold? <laughs> actually, Benedict Arnold was a petty traitor compared to our present traitors in Washington. Now let's go back to the events that followed the rape of our Constitution by the passage of the oh, Federal Reserve Act of the 16th Amendment. With Wilson completely under their control, the masterminds of the great conspiracy put in motion their next and what they hoped would be their final steps to achieve their one world government. The first of those steps was to be World War I. Why war? Simple. Did we just the circle all the way back to World War I? We did. supposedly ensure peace. The only thing that can make people cry for peace is war. War brings chaos, destruction, exhaustion, to winner as well as to loser. It brings economic ruin to both. Most important, it destroys He's the power of the He's been going in manhood. circles this entire the time. the heartbroken oldsters, the mothers and fathers, yep. who are left with nothing but memories of their beloved sons, peace becomes worth any price. And that is the emotion upon which the conspirators depend for the success of their satanic... This dude doesn't understand that America was literally the winner of World War I. America hardly lost anybody during the war. Like... Uh, just plot throughout the 19th century, from 1814 to war. 1914, the world people in America were upset with peace. They wanted more war. It didn't bring America to want peace at all. The world as a whole was at peace. Such wars as the Franco-Prussian, our own civil war, the Russo-Japanese war, were what might be termed local disturbances that did not affect the rest of the world. All the great nations were prosperous. The people staunchly nationalistic and fiercely proud of their sovereignties. It was utterly unthinkable that the French and the German peoples would be willing to live under a one-world government, or the Turks and the Russians, or the Chinese and the Japanese. 
even more unthinkable that a Kaiser Wilhelm or a Franz Joseph or a Tsar Nicholas or any monarch would willingly and meekly surrender his throne to a one world government. But bear in mind that the peoples in all nations are the real power and only one thing, war, could make the peoples yearn and clamor for a peace ensuring one world government. But it would have to be a frightful and horribly devastating war. It could not be just a local disturbing war between just two nations. It would have to be a world war. No major nation must be left untouched by the horrors and devastation of such a war. The cry for peace must be made universal. Actually, that was the format set by the Illuminati and Nathan Rothschild at the turn of the 19th century. They first maneuvered all of Europe into the Napoleonic Wars. Then the Congress... It's important to note that every single time he brings up anything the Rothschilds say is completely fabricated because it never happened. Because the only evidence we have of the Rothschilds ever being conspirators is a pamphlet written in the 1840s that was completely fabricating a story from Napoleon. Uh, Napoleon's era during Waterloo. And the only way the Rothschilds would have gotten so rich to have that much control would have been if that story is true, which is not. Because if you look at the actual story, nothing in it is true. Our diabetic friend actually bought all that up and showed that it was completely false. So the whole idea of the Rothschilds controlling anything is completely false because the story of how they got their power is false. Like, there's no way for them to have gotten their power. Everyone, like, brings that up. It's like, well, they got their power through lying and abusing, and it's like, but that story is false. So how'd they get their, pa how'd they get their money and power? Oh, wait, that's right. They, they didn't get it that way. They got it through the normal means like everybody else and didn't become any richer than anybody else at their level. It's just stupid. Don't Vienna, try and bring up they, logic. And particularly blow Rothschild, up plans to transform yeah, a into point. a League of Nations, which was to have been the housing for their one world government, exactly as the present United Nations was set up to be the housing for the forthcoming, God forbid, one world government. Anyway, that was the format the House of Rothschild and Jacob Schiff decided to employ to achieve their objective in 1914. Of course, they knew that that same format had failed in 1814, but they theorized that was only because the Tsar of Russia had torpedoed that scheme. Well, the present 1914 conspirators would eliminate He's that 1814 fly in the ointment. Uh -huh. okay. They'd make sure and he also got that whole wrong, that whole thing wrong again. The Tsar of Russia actually put forward the Holy Alliance, which is what they... It's, it's so stupid. The Holy Alliance is what the League of Nations was based off of. ...sure that after the New World War, they were conspiring, there'd be no Tsar of Russia around to throw monkey wrenches into the machinery. He's acting, he's acting as if the Tsar of Russia is some super good guy. Nicholas was an idiot. It's not the fact that he's the Tsar of Russia. It takes a certain personality. Like, not only is he just wrong about how the Congress of Vienna went down, but this whole idea of that's what they're thinking was, that the fact that he's just the Tsar of Russia is going to change things, is also idiotic. We'll go into how they accomplished this first step to launch a world war. History records that World War I was precipitated by a trivial incident. The kind of incident both Weishaupt and Albert Pike Trivial? had incorporated in their blueprints. That incident was the assassination of an Austrian Archduke, arranged by the Illuminati masterminds. The war followed. It involved. He was assassinated by college students. That's what? I'm going to make an entire video about the assassination, so I'm not going to go into it right now, but the idea that it was some huge banking firm that did it is stupid. And I'll explain that in my future video. So, yeah, I don't feel like getting into it right now because it would take me about an hour to explain it. All Germany, Austria, Hungary and their allies, so-called the Axis powers against France, Britain and Russia, called the Allies. Only the United States was not involved during the first two years. By 1917, the conspirators had achieved their primary objective. All of Europe was in a state of destitution. All the peoples were war weary and crying for peace. And the outcome, too, was all set. It was to come as soon as the United States would be hurled in on the side of the Allies. And that was all set to happen immediately after Wilson's re-election. After that, there could be only one outcome, complete victory for the Allies. To fully confirm my statement that long before 1917, the conspiracy headed in America by Jacob Schiff had it all set to hurl the United States into that war, I will cite the proof. When Wilson was campaigning for re-election in 1916, his chief appeal was, re-elect the man who will keep your sons out of the war. But during that same campaign, the Republican Party publicly charged that Wilson had long committed himself to throw us into the war. They charged that if he would be defeated, he would accomplish that act during his few remaining months in office. But if re-elected, he would hold off until after re-election. But at that time, the American people looked upon Wilson as a godman. Republicans ran on the, uh, on, on the idea that we should go to war, and the Democrats ran on the platform that we should stay out of the war. We were just talking about this. I don't know what he's saying, but it's wrong. Well, Wilson was re-elected. And as per the schedule of the conspirators, he hurled us into the war in 1917. He used the sinking of the Lusitania as an excuse. No, a he didn't. Which also was pre -arranged. No, he didn't. He did not use that as an excuse. Telegram. 
Oh my god, he didn't use the sinking of Lusitania as an excuse that happened over a that happened almost two years before he actually declared war. He used the Zimmerman telegram used the Zimmerman. and the unconditional submarine warfare declaration by Germany in 1917 as the revolution kicked off, right before the revolution kicked off in Russia, as the declaration of war. He actually declared war after the revolution in Russia kicked off. It, oh, it's just... How this isn't that hard. He could have easily said the Zimmerman telegram and and been right, and have just gone through with it. But he said Lusitania. Like it's not that hard to get right, dude. He's just showing that he knows nothing about the history of it, and that he's not someone who should be listened to. But to people who don't know history, the, the, he just sounds like a freaking genius that has uncovered some some crazy truth. Roosevelt, also a godman in the eyes of the American people, followed the same technique in 1941 when he used the prearranged Pearl Harbor attack as his excuse for her. How is that an excuse for war? America got attacked. He's like, he's like Roosevelt used the same technique after the Pearl Harbor attacks to declare war on, on Japan. That was an attack. We literally got attacked. Japan attacked United States soil. How is that a sneaky way like what, what Woodrow Wilson did? Woodrow Wilson declared war on Germany without any attack against America. Roosevelt declared war on Japan after an attack on American soil. Hurling us into World War II. Now exactly as the conspirators planned. Germany declared war on America in World War II. Roosevelt, the worst thing he did was embargo Japan. Victory for the Allies would eliminate all the monarchs of the defeated nations and leave all their peoples leaderless, confused, bewildered, and perfectly conditioned for the one world government the great conspiracy intended would follow. But there still would be an obstacle, the same obstacle that had balked the Illuminati and Rothschild at that Congress in Vienna peace gathering after the Napoleonic Wars. Russia would be on the winning side this time as it was in 1814. Therefore, Russia is not the same. Ru Russian World War I is not the same Russia as the Russian after the Napoleonic Wars. If these people are so smart to go off and form a First World War and do all the stuff that he's saying, they'd be smart enough to know that. But this dude has no brain, so, I mean, there you go. Or the Tsar would be securely on his throne. Here it is pertinent to note that Russia, under the Tsarist regime, had been the one country in which the Illuminati had never made any headway, nor had the Rothschilds ever been able to infiltrate their banking interests. Thus, a winning czar would be more difficult than ever to cope with. Even if he could be enticed into a so-called League of Nations, it was a foregone conclusion that he would never but never go for a one-world government. So even before the outbreak of World War I, the conspirators He's had a plan in the making to carry out like Nathan God. Rothschild's vow of 1814 to destroy the czar and also murder all Honestly, possible though. royal heirs to the throne. And it would have to be I think this dude needs to read a book about the Tsar, because Tsar Nicholas II was an absolute idiot, and most of the Tsars were horrible, evil psychopaths. Like, terrible people. Literally people you do not want to look up to. But he's making them out to be these gods of awesome, because he thinks that they stopped the Illuminati after the uh, Congress of Vienna, even though they, they created the thing that the League of Nations is based off of be done before the close of the war and the Russian Bolsheviki were to be their instruments in this particular plot. From the turn of the century, I'm gonna skip the chiefs of the Bolsheviki were Nikolai Lenin, Leon right. Trotsky, and Lower East Side in Just New York, because he's largely go the habitat again. of Russian Jewish refugees. Oh, Yet both always had left. plenty of money. All those mysteries were solved. An hour? Night an after hour night. video left at one and a half speed, so more like 40 minutes. All right, I was Trotsky about to darted say. furtively in and out of Jacob Schiff's palatial mansion. And in the dead of those same nights, there were gatherings of hoodlums of New York's Lower hoodlums. East Side, all of them Russian refugees, at Trotsky's headquarters. And all were going through some mysterious sort of training process. But it was all shrouded in mystery. Nobody talked. Although it... It's actually because the Soviets and the communists... So before World War I, there was actually a plan by the international socialists to strike if a war broke out between great powers. That plan fell apart. And when the Soviet Revolution happened in Russia, a lot of uh, socialists and communists were like, now is our time, let's rise up across all nations for the workers and overthrow these oppressive governments and create a new one for ourselves. 
even in America, people saw the American government as imperialist and as self-serving rather than serving the people like it was supposed to. So all these mysterious tradings were tradings to overthrow the governments. It just never happened because the war didn't go poorly for the Allies. It happened in Germany because the war went poorly for them. It's, it's not rocket science. It's just how societies work. It did leak out that Schiff was financing all of Trotsky's activities. Then suddenly Trotsky vanished. So did approximately 300 of his trained hoodlums. Actually, they Ooh, were on the high seas in a Schiff chartered ship bound for a rendezvous with Lenin and his gang in Switzerland. And on that ship was $20 million in gold. The $20 million Schiff provided to finance the Bolsheviki takeover of Russia. The Germans provided the money to take over Russia. No banks. The Kaiser and Ludendorff did. They got him to Russia and they financed the revolution. In anticipation of Trotsky's arrival, Lenin prepared to throw a party in his Switzerland hideaway. Men of the very highest places in the world were to be guests at that party. Among them were the mysterious Colonel Edward Mandel House. Another of the expectant guests was Warburg of the Warburg banking clan in Germany. All right, none of this is true. I'm just Russia. skipping past it because murdered. it doesn't matter. Now we part of the Illuminati's great conspiracy for the enslavement of the entire world. That communism so-called is merely their weapon and bogeyman word to terrify the peoples of the Bogeyman whole world. Word. And that the conquest of Russia and the creation of communism was in great part organ... Yes, some might even refuse to believe it. Well, for the benefit of any doubting Thomas, I will prove it by reminding that just a few years ago, Charlie Knickerbocker, a Hearst newspaper columnist, published an interview the figure old Jacob contributed, twenty by the of the Bolsheviki party. Now, Bolshevism is a purely Russian word. The masterminds realized that Bolshevism could never be sold as an ideology to any but the Russian people. Ideology. So in April 1918, Jacob Schiff dispatched Colonel House to Moscow with orders to Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin to change the name of their regime to the Communist Party and to adopt the Karl Marx Manifesto as the constitution of the Communist Party. Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin obeyed. And that year of 1918 was when the Communist Party and the menace of communism came into being. All One this minutes. is confirmed in Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, 5th edition. In short, communism was created by the capitalists. Thus, until November what? 11, 1918, the entire fiendish plan of the conspirators worked perfectly. All the great nations, including the United States, were war-weary, devastated, mourning their dead. Peace the United was States was not war-weary. What? The United States came out of World War I ready to fight up until 1922. Uh, a great universal desire. Thus, when it was proposed by Wilson to set up a League of Nations to ensure peace, all the great nations, with no Russian czar to stand in their way, jumped on that bandwagon without even stopping to read the fine print in that insurance policy. That is all but one, the United States, the very one that Schiff and his co-conspirators lead. Also, Bolshevism was always a form of communism. It didn't become communism because people wanted it to be. It was always based on, Mar on the Marxist teachings. I don't understand this whole thought of like it became communism and wasn't communism until it became it. That's not true. It was always following those ideologies. Least expected would balk, and that was their one fatal mistake in that early plot. You see, when Schiff planted Woodrow Wilson in the White House, the conspirators assumed that they had the United States in the proverbial bag. Wilson had been perfectly built up as a... There was every reason for the conspiracy, exactly as the Congress of 1945 bought the United Nations sight unseen. But there was one man in the Senate in 1918 who saw through that scheme just as the Russian Tsar did in 1814. He was a man of great political stature, almost as great as that of Teddy Roosevelt, oh God. and fully as astute. He was high... So he's a fan of Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt created an imperialist United States. Like, if anyone wants to talk about, like, a possible connection to the Illuminati, Teddy Roosevelt is that guy. Teddy Roosevelt called for intervention in World War I. Teddy Roosevelt basically called for uh, imperialism across the world for America and to put America as, like, a nation, like, in Europe. The, the dude wasn't... It's just... Uh, just really ...respected and trusted by all members of both houses of Congress and by the American people. The name of that great and patriotic American was Henry Cabot Lodge, not the phony of today who called himself Henry Cabot Lodge Jr. until he was exposed. Lodge completely unmasked Wilson and kept the United States out of the League of Nations. Here it becomes of great interest to know the real reason for the Wilson League of Nations flop. As I previously stated, Schiff was sent to the United States to carry out... Lodge was also an advocate of entering World War I. He wanted to get into the war. Like, huh? Okay. For specific assignments. Number one and most important was to acquire complete control of the U.S. money system. Number two. Lodge also wanted to join the League of Nations. 
he he he's oh god he, okay. As outlined in the original White I, House I can't Illuminati take this guy blueprint, seriously. he was to find the right kind of men. I wasn't aware you were taking seriously in the first place. No, I just, I just can't even like listen. Like, Congress, get into a U.S. Point Supreme Court, like, and all federal agencies. I'm going to skip past the section the because he's Pentagon, like, the Treasury Department. He's talking about how Lodge was against the League of Nations, how he was like the perfect dude, how he saw through the scheme. The dude wanted to join the League of Nations. He wanted to enter the war. He supported Woodrow Wilson. Like, you do some basic, quick research, and this dude's entire argument falls apart. He's making all, he's working up all these people j just so that you can learn that they're not what he's talking about at all. Right, right. Complete control of our mass communications media. The control of the press was assigned to Rockefeller. Thus, Henry Luce, who recently died, was financed to set up a number of national magazines. Among them, Life, Time, Fortune, and others, which publish USSR in America. The Rockefellers also directly or indirectly financed the Cowles Brothers Look magazine and a chain of newspapers. They also financed a man named Sam Newhouse to buy up and build a chain of newspapers all over the country. And the late Eugene Meyer, one of the founders of CFR, bought the Washington Post, Newsweek, the Weekly Magazine, and other publications. At the same time, CFR began to develop and nurture a new breed of scurrilous columnists and editorial writers, such as Walter Lippmann, Drew Pearson, the Alsops, Herbert Matthews, Erwin Canham, and others of that ilk, who called themselves liberals, who proclaimed that Liberal Americanism bad. is isolationism, that isolationism is warmongerism, that anti-communism is anti-Semitism and racism. All that took time, of course, but today our entire press, except for some local small-town papers and weeklies published by patriotic organizations, is completely controlled by CFR Stooges, and thus they finally succeeded Stooges. in breaking us up into a nation of quarreling, you ever watched the three squabbling, Stooges? hating factions. Now, if you still wonder <laughs> about the slanted news and outright lies you That's read what in your I think paper, of whenever you have I the just hear that word. To the layman's <laughs> Goldman Sachs, Kuhn Loeb, and the Warburgs, the CFR assigned the job of getting control of the motion picture industry, Hollywood, radio, and television. And believe you me, they succeeded. You if you mean. still wonder about the strange propaganda broadcasts by the you Ed mean. Murrows, Chet Huntley, Howard K. Smith, Eric Severide, Sorry, Drew I'm Pearson, skipping and ahead a little bit just because the dude just keeps saying nothing. ...until... And unless Please, the whole world would accept the communist regime as the legitimate de jure government of Russia, only one thing could accomplish that. I love recognition you can skip by the United ahead States. And you still the conspirators nothing. figured that the whole world would follow our lead. And that's when what the, the comments of the, wrecked the entire plot. The video say? Throughout the following three Republican administrations, the CFR pulled some. every trick in their back to, to induce comments. Harding, Coolidge, and Hoover to grant that recognition. But all three refused. This video should have as a billions result, in the late of views. It should be played in every school. The Stalin regime was in dire straits. Despite all purges what? and secret police I'm control, this on a daily. the Russian people were this growing more and more relevant now than It is a matter before. of record, admitted by Litvinov, that during 1931 the and 1932, Stalin and his whole gang always packed and ready for instant the flight. Allow the then in November 1932, the conspirators unfettered. achieved their greatest coup. <laughs> they landed Franklin Roosevelt in the White House. Crafty, unscrupulous, utterly without conscience. Okay. That charlatan traitor. This okay. video has 385,000 views. And 6.5 thousand likes and 222 that dislikes. And exactly as the conspirators figured, the whole world did follow our lead. Automatically, that squelched. You said how many likes? Resistance movement of the Russian people. 6,500 likes, 200 dislikes. Are known. The rest Dude. is too well known to need repeat. Yeah. We know how Roosevelt and his traitorous State Department kept building up the communist menace right here in our own country, and thus throughout the world. We know how he perpetrated that Pearl Harbor atrocity. For his excuse to hurl us. We know how he perpetrated the Pearl Harbor atrocity. How? You don't explain it. You're just going to say we know, and then everyone's going to believe you because they're a bunch of sheep. The World War II. We know all about his secret meetings with Stalin at Yalta and how he... With secret I meetings? Those were like propaganda. They propagandized those meetings to hell. They weren't secret at all. The secret part of them was the split up of Europe, which quickly became open to the public, especially at the time of this recording, and how they basically agreed, like, hey, we got to split up Europe somehow into political groups because, like, Europe needs to get reformed after what's happened because all of Europe is under German control. So let's change it up. Anywhere under Nazi occupation, we have to figure out who gets what. Like, that's not, like, some secret horrible conspiracy. That's just politics. France and Britain secretly met and split up the Middle East. Why isn't that talked about? But is a freaking meeting at Yalta is? Uh, just dumb. Eisenhower's help delivered the Balkans and Berlin to Moscow. And last, but by no means least, we know that that 20th century Benedict Arnold not only dragged us into that new corridor, the United Nations, into one world government, but actually schemed all the arrangements to plant it within our country. In short, 
The day that Roosevelt entered the White House, the CFR conspirators regained full control of our foreign relations machinery and firmly established the United Nations as the housing for the Illuminati One World Government. And I wish to stress one other very vital point. That Wilson League of Nations flop brought Schiff and his gang to the realization that control of just the Democratic Party was not enough. True, they could create a crisis during the Republican administration, as they did in 1929 with their Federal Reserve manufacturing. crash what this guy sounds like at two speed. Which would bring another Democrat stooge back into the White House. But they realized... Doesn't sound much faster. Yes. Is that it sounds like a 1930s announcer. Yeah. Could play havoc with the progress of their conspiracy. It could even break up their entire strategy, as it almost did before Roosevelt saved it with his recognition of the Stalin regime. Thereupon, after that, they began to formulate plans to achieve control of both of our national parties. But that posed a problem for them: manpower, stooges in the Republican Party, also added manpower for the Democratic Party, because control of just a man in the White House would not be enough. They'd have to provide that man with trained stooges for his entire cabinet, men to head the State Department, the Treasury Department, the Pentagon, the CIA, the USIA, etc. In short, every member of the various cabinets would have to be a chosen tool of the CFR, such as Rusk and McNamara. Also, all undersecretaries and assistant secretaries. That would give the conspirators absolute control of all our policies, both domestic and, most important, foreign. That course of action would require a reserve pool of trained stooges, instantaneously ready for administrative changes and for all other exigencies. All such stooges would of necessity have to be men of national reputation, high in the esteem of the people, but they would have to be men without honor, without scruple, without conscience, men who would be vulnerable to blackmail. It is needless for me to stress how well the CFR succeeded. The immortal Joe McCarthy fully revealed that there are thousands of such security risks in all federal agencies. Scott McLeod unmasked thousands more, and you know the price Otepka has had to pay, and is still paying, for his expositions before a Senate committee of the traitors in the State Department. And you know that the men in the State Department who delivered Cuba to Castro have not only been shielded, but promoted to the crux of the whole one world government plot and the maneuvering necessary to create another league of nations to house such a government as i have already stated the conspirators knew that only another world war was vital for the success of their plot it would have to be such a horrifying world war that the peoples of the world would cry out for the creation of some Scientific kind of a world organization of that could assure everlasting <laughs> peace but how could such a war be brought about all the european nations were at peace none had any quarrels with their neighboring nations and certainly their tools in moscow wouldn't dare to start a war even stalin realized that it would mean the overthrow of his regime oh, unless so-called patriotism Sus. would weld the russian people behind him but the conspirators had to have a war. They had to find or create some kind of an incident to launch it. And they found it in a little inconspicuous and repulsive little man who called himself Adolf Hitler. Hitler, an impecunious oh. Austrian house painter, had been a corporal in the German army. He made the defeat of Germany into a personal grievance. He began to rabble rouse about it in the Munich, <laughs> Germany area. Rabble rouse. He began to spout about restoring the greatness of the German Here Empire and the might of the German soldiery. He advocated the restoration of the old German military to be used to conquer the whole world. Strangely enough, no, Hitler, the little clown that he was, could the deliver a rabble-rousing speech. Oh, he did have a certain kind of magnetism. At least but the he new doesn't like in Hitler. Germany didn't want any more wars, and they promptly threw the obnoxious. This dude is an anti-Semite, but he doesn't like Hitler. The duality That's of our... man. The duality of man. This Austrian house painter into a prison cell. Aha! Here was the man, decided the conspirators, who, properly directed and financed, could be the key to another world war. So while he was in prison, they had Rudolf Hess and Goering. Write a book, which they... Gehring. Oh, God. He's talking... Oh. Hey, let's real quick sing the anthem of Hitler being a dummy. You know, Hitler has only got one ball. ball. <laughs> Gehring Hitler. has two, but they're very small. Hitler you know, I've never heard. has something similar. And poor old Goebbels has no balls at all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, not Hitler. Yeah, Rafa, I feel it. Not Hitler. Oh, God. Titled Mein Kampf and attributed Don't worry, the authorship he's only got one ball. Exactly as Litvinov wrote Mission to Moscow and attributed the authorship he's to Joseph Davies, then our ambassador to Russia, and a stooge of the CFR. Stooge. In Mein Kampf, stooge. Hitler, the pseudo-author, outlined his grievances and how he would restore the German people to their former greatness. The conspirators then arranged for a wide circulation of the book among the German people in order to arouse a fanatical following for him. On his release from prison, also arranged by the conspirators. If they could do all of this, why'd they need a second world war to, like, do anything at all? You know? They could... I, I, I don't know. It's like it falls apart when you're like, they created Nazi Germany. So why didn't they just create a world that was willing to go into a world government without war? Like, they could do that with Germany. I don't know. It's like the whole thing falls apart when, the second you even give it some thought. They began to groom him and finance him to travel to other parts of Germany to deliver his rabble-rousing speeches. Soon he gathered a growing following among other veterans of the war, and that soon spread to the masses, who began to see in him as savior for their beloved Germany. Then came his leadership of what he called his Brown Shirt Army and the March on Berlin. That required a great deal of financing, but the Rothschilds, the Warburgs, and others of the conspirators provided all the money he needed. Gradually, Hitler became the idol of the German people, and then they overthrew the von Hindenburg government. 
and Hitler became the new Fuhrer. But that still was no reason for a war. The rest of the world watched Hitler's rise, but saw no reason to interfere in what was distinctly a domestic condition within Germany. Certainly none of the other nations felt it was a reason for another war against Germany, and the German people were not yet incited into enough of a frenzy to commit any acts against any neighboring nation, not even against France, that would lead to a war. Not the even against realized France. Have to create such and a frenzy. <laughs> Every a frenzy German that would cause the German people to throw caution to, to the winds and at the same time horrify the whole world. And but incidentally, all the homies hate France. Actually, a follow-up of Karl Marx's book, A World Without Jews. The conspirators that's suddenly remembered how the Schiff Rothschild gang <laughs> had engineered the no problems in Russia. No way, that's a book. Many, many thousands of Jews and created a worldwide hatred for Russia. And they decided to use that same unconscionable it's trick a book. to inflame the new Hitler-led German people <laughs> into a murderous <laughs> hatred of the yeah, Pause, hang on. A World Without Jews uh, by Karl There's Marx. No way. A World Without Jews by Karl Marx speaks about religious prejudice specifically against Jews. It begs a question, can the world survive without the prejudice, and how Jews beg, beg for political emancipation? Karl Marx, 1818-1883, is best known not as a philosopher, but as a revolutionary communist, whose works inspired the foundation of many communist regimes in the 20th century. It is hard to think of many who have, lived as mu who have had as much influence in the creation of the modern world. Trained as philosopher, Mar okay, so hand. Da, 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 da. Bro, there's no so way. So he's basically talking about like, can Jews actually get out of their? Um... Oh, and it's a mistranslation. The translator of World Without Jews invented the title. Mark's real title is "And der Juden Fraga." Obviously, to be translated by anyone who has the least knowledge of Germ German as on the Jewish question. <laughs> so it isn't a world without Jews. It's on the Jewish question. So this dude didn't do any d research into that either. I learned that in five seconds. Well, we have Google. No, but like all you have to do is look into the original German manuscripts. This dude dug through archives to find simple newspaper articles to find evidence of name changes, and he couldn't get his hands on an original printing of the book in well, that's German. Sad. You know, he brought up the German name for Mein Kampf, but he couldn't bring up the German name for the on the Jewish question. I still find it funny though that it got translated as a world without Jews by Karl Marx. <laughs> 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 oh, what that's funny. What in the world? <laughs> a world without Jews. A like world that. without Jews. In a world without Jews. Without Jews. Coming to a theater near you. Rated R. Rated R. R. Rated Peach. For radical, bro. Jews. R. Now for it is true red. that the German people never had any particular affection for the Jews, but neither did they have an ingrained hatred for them. Such a hatred would have to be manufactured. So Hitler was used to create it. This no, it wasn't. It was manufactured by Ludendorff with his stab in the back book. There was no manufactured hatred. In fact, most Germans didn't even know the Holocaust was going on, and a lot of the hatred towards Jews was mainly created during the Weimar Republic years, specifically with Ludendorff trying to promote the idea that Germany lost the war and went into such strife because the Jewish bankers were exploiting Germany, and especially since a lot of the Jews within Germany didn't seem to suffer as bad, and that mostly came from the fact that a lot of them were in businesses that weren't affected by the war. So the, cons so the whole thought process came from that. So the Germans were suffering. It didn't appear to them, even though the Jews were suffering, that the Jews were suffering nearly as bad, and so there was this prejudice that was created that was already there from before the war, and so they were more likely to take it out on them. So when you have someone who's super successful in turning things around and saying that he's doing it because he's taking out the Germans Jewish influence, yeah, you're going to create hatred for it. But it still wasn't that... Ah, just a basic understanding of history shows you that what this dude is saying is malarkey. This idea more than appealed to Hitler. Malarkey. He saw in it the grisly gimmick to make him the godman of the German people. Thus craftily inspired and coached by his financial advisors, the Warburgs, Rothschilds, and all the Illuminati masterminds, he blamed the Jews for the hated Versailles Treaty and for the financial ruination that followed the war. The rest is history. We know all about the Hitler concentration camps and the incineration of hundreds... Well, here's the thing. 
the whole idea that he that he created a hatred based on Versailles is false. It wasn't the Treaty of Versailles that the Germans hated. It was the fact that they felt like they they were they were slighted, and that the war was lost because of the Jewish greedy bankers. The Treaty of Versailles had very little to do with the German resurgence of wanting a war. The Treaty of Versailles wasn't even that harsh. The thousands of Jews, not the six million nor even the 600,000 claimed by the conspirators. Oh, God. But it was He's enough. also Holocaust denier. And here let me reiterate how little the internationalist oh, bankers, no. the Rothschilds, Let's Schiff, listen to that again. History. Hated Versailles Treaty and for the financial ruination that followed the war. The rest is history. We know all about the Hitler concentration camps and the incineration of hundreds of thousands of Jews. Not the 6 million, nor even the 600,000 claimed by the conspirators. But it was enough. And here, so, let me reiterate how little the internationalist bankers... Real quick, let's talk about the Holocaust, uh, because this is a touchy subject. Uh, the number 6 million is more than likely an overstatement. Um, the number is probably closer to 4.5 million to 5.5 million. Obviously, that's still a lot. That's a lot of people. But 6 million, no. Uh, the population of Jews actually went down, like lowered, about just over 6 million during the war years based off population data. Uh, that you can actually find in almost any atlas uh, printed in the area. So there's atlases that have population data that actually break it up into ethnicities, and they actually have a Jewish record. I have old documents in my house for it that I can actually share upon request. And they actually break it up against religions and ethnicities, and Jewish is one of them. And so if you look at the population data for before the war, you'll see a certain number. I forget what it is, but then you can actually look at the population after it. And I used to look at these when I was working at an antique store, and we had a pre-war atlas with the population data and one for after the war. And the Jewish population actually only goes down just over 6 million, and most of that's located in Europe. Now, if you account for typical war wastage and lowered birth rates due to the war, you actually get a number closer to 4 to 5 million people that, are, that you have unaccounted for, which there you go. There's your evidence for the Holocaust, that one, the Holocaust happened. But it didn't kill 6 million, it killed closer to 4 to 5 million. The reason why we have the 6 million number is because that is actually the close, that is actually the number of the people that were killed by the Holocaust totally. More than likely. It probably was closer to 7 million. And the reason why we just include everybody is because at the time, the people that the Germans were prosecuting weren't just the Jews, but also the gypsies, the homosexuals, the people with disabilities, uh, the people with mental problems, uh, people that were also being having the similar things done in other nations. Homosexuals in other nations were being killed. People with disabilities in other nations were being killed. People with mental problems were being killed in other nations. And the thing is, is that the main nations did not want that to get out because if it, if it got out that you know the Nazis were also doing that, then those other nations would have to stop what they were doing. And the, peop the powers that be didn't want that to get out, so they're like, it was just the Jews. Because the thing is, if you think homosexuals are bad for your society, which is not true, and you're actively killing them and sending them to mental institutions, and it comes out that the Nazis who killed five million Jews were doing the same exact thing as you are, well, now you're just as bad as the Nazis, and those practices are going to be looked down upon. So instead, you just say everyone who died was a Jew, and you just stop talking about all the disabled people that were killed. And the thing is, is the killing of disabled people and people with mental disabilities is still practiced in some Western countries. Um, in Iceland, for example, if during, while you're pregnant in Iceland, um, if they find that the baby has Down syndrome, they, they'll just basically say, sorry, you have to have an abortion. There's no, you don't really have a choice. So it's still alive and well. And uh, yeah, <laughs> um, sorry for the rant there. Um, anyway, also the Rothschilds, the whole conspiracy of them having like a ton of money and power that comes from a French dude who was a nobody. So I don't, I, I like, he was probably rich and had power and all that, but he wasn't someone who's like a super manipulator of world politics. He just kind of existed. He's basically like how Bezos and Elon Musk are today. They don't control the world, but they have a lot of influence, you know, like they can move nations to do some things. So anyway, back to the video. The Rothschilds. Unless you want to say something, Kriegs or, uh, no, nah. boy. Uh I mean, Freikor, sorry, I'm tired. It's 10 p.m. here. 10 p.m.? Oh, yeah. it's 10 o'clock. So. Chips Why does it feel later than it is? Because this Care about is their racial brethren who were the victims of their nefarious scheme. That's fair enough. In their eyes, the slaughter of the several hundred thousand innocent Jews by Hitler didn't bother them at all. They considered it a necessary sacrifice to further their Illuminati one-world plot. 
just as the slaughter of the many millions in the wars that followed was a similar necessary sacrifice. And here is another grisly detail about those concentration camps. Many of the Hitler soldier executioners in those camps had previously been sent to Russia to acquire their arts of torture and brutalization so as to emphasize the horrors of the atrocities. Oh, God. All this created a new worldwide hatred. Again, just pointing it to communism. They learned all that from the brutality of Russia, even though that's... What? ...for the German people, but it still did not provide a cause for war. Thereupon, Hitler was incited to demand the Sudetenland. You're no one knew about the Holocaust until after the war. Remember how Chamberlain and the then diplomats of Czechoslovakia and France it surrendered? It wouldn't have been used as a reason for war because it wasn't known. They knew that there was, you know, stuff going against the Jews, but the Holocaust wasn't known in full until post-war. So there, w there wouldn't have been a reason. ...to that demand. That the led to further Hitlerian demands for territories in Poland Hitlerian. and in the French Tsar territories. Oh, God. Those demands were rejected. Then came his pact with Stalin. Hitler had been screaming hatred against communism. Oh, how he ranted against communism. But actually, Nazism was nothing but socialism. And communism is, in fact, socialism. No, no, Nazism, the fascist Germans were not socialists. Hitler specifically targeted socialists within Germany and had them killed during the Night of Long Knives. Uh, Hitler was a staunch anti-socialist and even in a certain, and has written, there are writings to confirm it, that he only used the socialist name in order to get more votes and more support from the people. He was anti-socialist. It's like saying that North Korea is a democracy because in their name is the People's Democratic Republic of North Korea. It's, it's the same thing. The Nazis were not socialist. They were anti-capitalist, anti-socialist, and anti-communist. They used slave labor, private institutions, and socialist reforms that aren't like they, like semi-socialist reforms to build a society and economy, but they were against the concepts of capitalism, against the overall idea of socialism, and against communism. It was a weird hybrid, and that's why the German economy sucked so much, because it was literally nothing. It, it's, it's... The myth of the Nazis being socialist is one that needs to die. But Hitler disregarded all that. He entered into a pact with Stalin to attack and divide Poland between them. While Stalin marched into one part of Poland, for which he was never blamed, the Illuminati mastermind saw to that. Hitler launched a blitzkrieg on Poland. The Illuminati mastermind. He, he attacked Poland after Germany had already declared war, and Britain and France both discussed going to war with Russia. There's proof of it. They didn't go to war with Russia because they knew that if they declared war on Russia, Russia and Germany would ally with each other and then just go up against Britain and France and they wouldn't stand a chance. They did it because they were forced. They could not declare war on Russia, especially since Russia didn't invade Poland until long after Poland was far gone. It's a simple, basic research into the frickin' history of how World War II unfolded that suddenly shows you that it was actually just due to the political situation and not some mastermind puppeteers controlling everything. Because if they were that masterful at doing that, they wouldn't need a war to control the world. Also something funny, he never explains why they want a one world government. Why they want any of that. Why do they want it? What's the point? They don't ever tell. They, he doesn't ever explain that. There's no motive. His side. The conspirators finally had this their new world war. Yeah, exactly. And what a horrible war it was. And in 1945, the conspirators finally achieved the United Nations, their new housing for their one world government. Not 1945. It happened during the war. I think it happened in like, what, 1943? What? Weren't the United Nations like formed during World War II? I thought it was 1945. Oh, it was formed in 1945. I could have swore that I saw something about basically it was like brought up during the war and like semi formed. Yeah, began getting drafted in April of 1945 and was fully drafted in June and then finally put into force after the war in October. Um, but it started getting moving in 1941. Yeah, the initial declaration for the United Nations was um, the Declaration of St. James Palace on 12th June of 1941. And truly amazing, all of the American people hailed this foul outfit as a holy of holies. Even after all the true facts about how the UN was created, 
were revealed, None of the American said people continued to worship guys. that evil outfit. Even after Alger Hiss was unmasked like, as a Soviet agree, spy and traitor, and the American terrible, people continued to believe in the on, UN. Guys. Even after I had publicly revealed the secret agreement between Hiss and Molotov, that a Russian would always be the head of the military secretariat, and by that token, the real master of the UN, most of the American people continued to believe that the UN could do no wrong. Even after Trigvi Lee, the first secretary general of the UN, confirmed that Hiss Molotov secret agreement in his book, For the Cause of Peace, the vast majority of our people refused to lose faith in the UN. Even after the truth about the Korean War was revealed, how the Russian general Vasiliev, head of that UN military secretariat, was given a leave of absence by the UN so that he could take command of the North Koreans and Red Chinese who were fighting the so-called UN police action under our own General MacArthur, who by orders of the UN was fired by the pusillanimous Truman in order to prevent his winning that war, our people still believed in the UN. Mac he was fired because he wanted a new China. How is that helping us win the war that would have started World War III? By your own logic, that's what the Illuminati wants. What? What? MacArthur was going to go was going crazy. Yeah, that's why he was fired because he was literally going to nuke China, not because he was going to win us the war, but because he was going to nuke the Chinese. This dude lived through that, and he's still making it, ma making so many mistakes. I, I just. Oh was used God. to crush, rape, and kill the white anti-communists in Katanga. Do you know that the UN stood by and did nothing while Red China invaded Laos and Vietnam? That it did nothing while Nehru invaded Goa and other ports? Yeah, because the UN is ineffective. Congratulations, you learned that the UN sucks and doesn't do anything and it's a toothless dragon. Portuguese territories. Do you know that the UN was directly responsible for aiding Castro? That it does absolutely nothing about the many thousands... Do you have proof for that? Where's the source, bud? I'd like to see a source. Like, I believe I would believe it because the UN sucks, but, like, you're going to make a claim like that and then not give a source? Okay. All he said was, did you know this and did you know that? Right, exactly. It's like, no, I didn't because where's your source? Thousands of Cuban youngsters who are shipped to Russia for youngsters. communist indoctrination. Youngsters. Do you know that Adlai Stevenson, of all people, said His voice the free world must expect to lose more and more decisions in the UN? Do you know that the UN openly proclaimed Grandpa's been going that a long time without drinking one water. Government. Dude, dude Which, we are on one and once we are at one and a half speed right now. Like that's how fast this is his normal voice again. Let's just let's just all enjoy his normal speaking voice. Means one world laws, one world court, one world army, one world navy. For sure one you didn't put it to point twenty five. No, it's at normal. Schools. And a one world church it's, in which Christianity no way, would be prohibited. There's no way. Do you know that a UN this law has, has been be. passed to disarm all Americans? I, I hear no difference. This is point 25. And to transfer point five. all our armed forces to the point UN? Normal. Such a law was secretly signed by I didn't even know Jack Kennedy in 1961. Do you realize how that fits in with Article 47, Paragraph 3 of the UN Charter, which states, Two. I quote, The Military Staff Committee of the UN shall be responsible through the Security Council for the strategic direction of all armed forces placed at the disposal of the Security Council, unquote. And when and if all our armed forces are transferred to the UN, your sons would be forced to serve and... So what's funny is that he's talking about, like, how this is going to happen within the next couple decades. Well, let's see what happened. The Soviet Union is no more, so there's the communist enemy. They're gone. Uh, the United States holds more power than the UN and has actually disconnected itself from a lot of the European nations and it has basically removed itself further and further from the UN after the wars in the Middle East. Uh, the United States has taken on a more isolation, isolationist stance on global politics since 9-11 after the failures in the Middle East. Um, it was a Republican that got us involved in the Middle East, not a Democrat. Uh, let's see. What's another thing that kind of disproves like his whole long-term thing? Uh, a lot of areas have actually stabilized that he said we're going to get worse. Uh, Russia continues to have problems. And the only thing that he might be able to bench on is China, which has only become a problem in the last eight years. So, yeah, literally his whole thing falls apart just by looking at his predictions completely coming undone. Die under UN command all over the world. This will happen unless you fight to get the U.S. When? Hey, the thanks, Rafa. I appreciate it. Do you know that Congressman James B. Utt has submitted appreciate a bill it. to get the U.S. out of the U.N. and a resolution to prevent our president 
from forcing us to support the UN embargoes on Rhodesia? Well, he has. And many people all over the country are writing to their representatives to oh, support Rhodesia. the UT bill and resolution. Rhodesia. And did you know that to offset the UT bill and resolution, 50 congressmen spearheaded by Schweiker and Moorhead of Pennsylvania have introduced a bill to immediately transfer all our armed forces to the UN. Can you imagine such brazen treason? Is your well, congressman happen, one of those 50 so... traitors? Find out and take immediate action against him and help Congressman Utt. Now, do you know that the National Council of Churches passed a resolution in San Francisco which states that the United States will soon have to subordinate its will to that of the UN and that all American citizens must be prepared to accept it? Is you and for our country. Now I have one more vital message to deliver. As I told you, Finally. one of the four specific assignments Rothschild gave About Jacob Schiff time. was to create a movement to destroy religion in the United States, with Christianity to be the chief target. For a very obvious reason, the Anti-Defamation League wouldn't dare to attempt it, because such an attempt could create the most terrible bloodbath in the history of the world, not only for the ADL oh, and the conspirators, but for the millions of innocent Jews. Schiff turned that job over to Rockefeller for another specific reason. The destruction of Christianity could be accomplished only by those who are entrusted to preserve it, by the pastors, the men of the cloth. As a starter... I mean, that's happened over the centuries. Christianity is not what Christianity... Nowadays is not what Christianity is supposed to do. There's too many Christians out there who look at the religion as some sort of... Um, some sort of, like, freaking bragging rights game instead of, you know, as what it's supposed to be, which is helping your fellow neighbor and, you know, treating people with respect and love and patience. That's the policy I've taken as a person is to give people the respect that they deserve and the, you know, the patience and the love and the understanding that you're supposed to give your fellow man. That's what Christianity is. It's not what it, what people think it is now where you'd have to go off and scream about gay marriage being terrible and um, all these other things that have no biblical basis. That's, it's already been destroyed. There's no conspiracy that needs it to happen. It was destroyed the second that it became the national religion of Rome. I don't understand what you're going at here with the Rothschilds and everything. It's just a dumb argument. A basic, a basic reading of the history of Christianity shows you that it got off the path of what it's supposed to be the second Rome accepted it as the main religion and replaced paganism with Christianity, and which would become Orthodox Christianity and, pag and Catholicism which was basically just rebranded paganism to make it more palatable for the converts. Not saying that it is paganism, but it was simply rebranded to make the people of Rome accept it more easily. Um, so exactly. say, saying that it's been just, it's going to be destroyed is wrong because it's already not Christianity. It's a bastardized version of it that most people still follow. So it's, it's again, another one of these stupid things that if you just take some time to look into it, you take these three hours that you spent recording this video and you put it into reading a couple books, suddenly you realize that all of it's fake. But this dude has his, has put his blinders on because he was bitter about losing his ability, losing his stuff as a playwright. It's freaking stupid. John D. Rockefeller picked up a young so-called Christian minister by the name of Dr. Harry F. Ward. Reverend Ward, if you please. At that time, he was teaching religion at the Union Theological Seminary. Rockefeller found a very willing Judas in this reverend. Thereupon, in 1907... He financed him to set up the Methodist Foundation of Social Service. And Ward's job was to teach bright young men to become so-called ministers of Christ and to place them as pastors of churches. While teaching them to become ministers, the Reverend Ward also taught them how to very subtly and craftily preach to their congregations that the entire story of Christ is a myth, to cast doubts on the divinity of Christ, to cast doubts about the Virgin Mary, in short, to cast doubts on Christianity as a whole. That's not it was true. not to be a direct attack but much of it by crafty insinuation that was to be applied in particular to the youth in the Sunday schools. <laughs> Remember Lenin's statement? Give me just one generation of youth and I'll transform the whole world. Then, in 1908, the Methodist Foundation of Social Service, which incidentally was America's first communist front organization, changed its name to the Federal Council of Churches. By 1950, the Federal Council of Churches was becoming very suspect. So in 1950, they changed the name to the National Council of Churches. Do I have to tell you more about how this National Council of Churches is deliberately destroying faith in Christianity? Yes, because none of what you yeah. said was true. Harry F. Ward did not preach that. He preached the idea of Christian socialism, which is the idea that Christians should form communes and self-support each other. 
which is how Christians lived after Jesus was persecuted and the Christians started to suffer Roman persecution. He was just a socialist who believed in the idea of voluntarily become, like voluntarily being a part of that system. I don't see a problem with any of that. This guy is just so hell-bent on hating leftists that he makes up garbage about people that he doesn't like. I just, uh, it's, it's becoming something of a pattern with this person. I don't think so. But this I will tell you. If you are a member of any congregation whose pastor and church are like members of this crackhead. Judas organization. So what now? It's almost like he's a crackhead. Oh, I'm pretty sure. There goes the crackhead that I see each morning. I wonder <laughs> what kind of drugs he's on. You, your contributions, are helping the Illuminati's plot to destroy religion and your faith in God and Jesus Christ. No, your belief that the that the person who got pregnant before marriage in your church should be excommunicated because they made a mistake is what's destroying your religious um, your religious cohesion and your faith in God, not a fictitious organization that is literally not doing anything because it ceased existing in the 1880s. I mean, the 1780s. I love these types of videos because they always push the blame of the problems with the church and the problems with Christianity onto some other force that no one can see, rather than taking responsibility for it and blaming it on, you know, the people who are to blame, which are the people who are within the religion themselves, not outside forces like Satan. Thus you are deliberately delivering your children to be indoctrinated with disbelief in God and church, and which can easily transform them into atheists. Find out immediately if your church. Oh, yeah. The worst thing in the world is for your son to come up to you and go, Mom, Dad, I'm atheist. Almost as bad as them telling you they're gay. <laughs> Almost as bad as saying they killed someone. Mom, Dad, I'm dating a minority. How dare you! <laughs> out, out of this house! Now! Are you listening to Martin Lucifer again? <laughs> <laughs> As a member of the National Council of Churches, and for the love of God and your children, if it is, withdraw from it at once. However, let me warn you, that same destroy. Oh yeah, don't try to help them. Don't try to fix them. Just withdraw. Leave. Boy, religion process has been infiltrated into other denominations. Get rid denominations. of them. Kill them. If you have seen the Negro March on Selma and other such demonstrations, <laughs> what did he say? It at once. However, let me warn you, that same destroy religion process has been infiltrated into other denominations. If you have seen the Negro March on Selma and other... <laughs> That's right, because at the time, this is when the huge march was going on. ...such demonstrations. You have seen how the Negro mobs are led and encouraged by ministers and even Catholic priests and nuns. Yes! Because... What? 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 He's saying that the people marching with, with the minorities for equality are, are Satanists who march along with them. As a matter of fact, the Mormon church is about the only one I know of that is clean of that kind of Judas. In the Mormon church, the one that is like the most insane, the Mormon church which preaches the idea that when you die, you'll be able to control women in your own little universe and have like that women are basically your slaves. That Mormon church, they're the clean ones. Okay, go away. No, no one. What if you what, what if you did, like, a whole entire series on Mormon? What? What if you just did an entire series on a breakdown of Mormonism? <laughs> Wolf of 1918 here. You might know me for my reenactment videos, for my history videos about, like, the 18th century, and uh, for my discussion about World War One. Well, here I'm going to be talking about the Mormon church and breaking down why that religion is terrible and how it hurts society, oh, how it's sexist and racist. I know this is completely within the realm of things that I normally talk about, i.e. politics and religions and touchy subjects. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey guys, Wolf of 1918 here. You may very well know me for my Why is the Norman Church bad videos. <laughs> Wolf of 1918 here with another gamer video. Another gamer <laughs> video. Infiltration. But of course, there are many individual churches and pastors who are honest and sincere. Find one such for yourself and for your children. In Find a church 
that still uses the N word with the hard R. That's basically what he's saying. That's yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Dude, find a church. I, I find a church that forces the minorities to sit on the other side of the building. Find a church that still has two sets of water fountains. Find a church that still has buses where the backside is not white. <laughs> That's what he's I saying. Never, I would have never expected him to bring like up Mormonism. No, like he, no, he literally. It, it's just, Mormonism is like a great like is one of the best arguments that you could have like there's a conspiracy to bring down Christianity because Mormonism is literally terrible. It's it's borderline a cult. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult, but Mormonism is like one of those like friendly groups where you don't think much of it and then you get into it and you're like, "Holy crap, what?" Um like they they are the go-to that you can think of when you think about like conspiracies to bring down a religion. Their whole setup and how they've been successful, you could easily make the argument that there's some conspiracy to use them to bring down Christianity. I don't believe that. They're just insane. They, the whole religion's just insane, like Jehovah's Witnesses, um, because of their sex, their history of sexist and racist beliefs and the fact that they were chased across the United States because of similar beliefs towards other people. Um, but, yeah, that was such a left-field thing. The Mormons are the good guys, is what he's saying, because they are still racist. Incidentally, this same Reverend Harry F. Ward was also one of the founders of the American Civil Liberties Union, a notorious pro-communist organization. He was the actual head of it. From no, 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 it was socialist. Get it right. Socialism and communism are different. Please, please get those right. You'll sound smarter if you start using them properly. 1920 to 1940. He also was a co-founder of the American League Against... This man is dead. Why do I care? ...war and fascism, <laughs> which, under Browder, he is finally, the Communist Party of the United after States. After an hour, in he short, just finally decided, this guy's dead. Why do I care? It's been four hours. Ward's entire background reeked of communism, and he was identified Damn, as a it member has. of the Communist Party. He died a vicious traitor to both his church and country. Oh, God. And this was the man, old John B. Rockefeller, picked and financed to destroy America's Christian religion. Right. in accordance with the orders given to Schiff by the Rothschilds. In conclusion, I have this to say. You probably are familiar with the story of how one Dr. Frankenstein created a monster to do his will of destroying his chosen victims, but how instead, in the end, that monster turned on his own creator, Frankenstein, and destroyed him. Well, the Illuminati, CFR, has created a monster called the United Nations, who, supported by their minority groups, rioting Negroes, the traitorous mass communications media, and the traitors in Washington, was created to destroy the American people. Well, we know all about that many-headed Hydra monster. We know the names of those who created that monster. We know all their names. And I... You know all their names. Which are just random names that you kind of make up or you just pull out of your hat and aren't actually associated with anything. Predict that one fine day, the American people will come fully awake and cause that very monster to destroy its Whoa. creator. True, the majority of our people are still being brainwashed, deceived, and deluded. By our he is the only one who's connected the dots, and, by our and he's in here to tell you but surely, that you by need now, to be aware of the Enough is known about the UN to stamp that outfit as a deadly, poisonous rattlesnake in our midst. My only wonder is what it will take to awaken and arouse our people to the full truth. Perhaps this record will do it. A hundred thousand or a million copies of this record can do it. I pray to God it will. And I pray to him to inspire you, all of you, to spread this story via this record to oh, all yeah, loyal Americans in your community. Right. You can do it by playing mm -hmm. it to study groups assembled in your homes, at meetings of the American Legion, the VFW, the DAR, all other civic groups oh, and the women's American clubs, Legion. especially the this women's clubs like who have their sons' lives at stake. With this record, I have provided you with a weapon oh, that will destroy the American monster. Legion? For the love of God, Was of it our country, like... and of your children, use it. Get a copy of it into every American home. Wasn't that like known for being super like, anti-civil rights? The what? Wasn't the American Legion, like, didn't they have a ton of, like, problems during the civil rights movement because a lot of people were, like, anti-civil rights? Or am I thinking of something else? I'm not a Yeah, yeah, no, it is. <laughs> they had okay. a long history of racism and being super segregated. Oh my goodness. They wouldn't accept black veterans of World War One. 
this, this whole thing just got like the most cringe part when he's like communism. He, when he's like, it's all just attack on Christianity. When he just he's like, it's all just attack on your churches and your local congregations and fellowship. They're they're trying to indoctrinate your children. I'm like that's where that's where it just went too far. I'm like, no. yeah, it's it's just crazy. It the whole thing is just insane. I, I just I don't understand like um here how about how about we break this down easier Doughboy what's your thoughts on this give a brief synopsis of your thoughts your critiques of the video and just your thoughts on the whole thing from a more a more from a perspective of more of ignorance of the events that he talked about I have absolutely no idea what I watched <laughs> or why I did but all I know is that I watched it. Ah, okay. What are your thoughts of the dude's beliefs? Retarded. <laughs> All right, Frycor, since you have a more educated outlook, like more well-versed, not to say that Doughboy isn't educated, just the... I'm not I'm educated. <laughs> That's right, you watch YouTube instead of study. Um, yeah. But from, from a more, like, well-versed in that time period sort of perspective, what's what's your whole thought process on the dude's understanding of historical events. So, so what he's going at is we're having, we're obviously having, you know, the cold war going on and there's all these political opponents. So they're, they're trying, they're trying to take them down, make jabs at them or whatever, because they're, because there's a red scare. So he goes on a rabbit trail all the way back to the 1600s. Some dude in Germany started the Illuminati and then, and then they went through every every single world war, World War II, all the wars, Franco Prussian, Napoleonic Wars, all that was caused caused by the Illuminati. Then he proceeds and if that's not enough, he he, he decides to bundle up the civil rights movement. Okay, civil rights. That's the Illuminati. That's the Illuminati too. <laughs> they want racial divide to help break down America so the Soviets <laughs> To get the upper hand, <laughs> and it, and if that's not enough, it gets it gets even worse than that. They're going after our congregations. They're trying to indoctrinate no. the gospel. No, they're not going the after our kids. No, the they're going to dumb down the gospel. We're going to have we're going to have equality now. We're going to have blacks sitting together with whites and interracial marriage. They're going to just this is they're going to this, this isn't Christianity anymore. They're going to convince the kids, our children that the poor kids are just as bright and just as smart as the white ones. White and gas. The Illuminati is going to convince our children that the minorities are just as equal. That interracial <laughs> marriage is okay. The Illuminati is going to do that. Dude, it was when I first was listening to this, the second he did that, the second he called the civil rights movement and the idea of interracial marriage being okay, the Illuminati trying to destroy society, I immediately went like, I got to stop listening to this. This is a live stream. This has to be a live stream that I can do because this is completely retarded. Everything else was already retarded, but that sold it. You know, like you can go off and like talk to people about the idiotic historical stuff. And, you know, I'll say that and I can just see them nodding and going, man, this dude is a freaking is freaking insane. Like, who cares this much? But then you bring up the civil rights stuff in everybody like they, there's that connection because everyone knows that, like. All the good people know that racism is bad. <laughs> so, bro, as soon as we started talking about the racism <laughs> shit, everyone joined. <laughs> Honestly, there's a legitimate spike. Dude, if you look at the viewership, there's a spike up to like nine people the second he started talking about racism. Like the neat like for a while we were just sitting around like we sometimes go up to six and when da, da 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 we went up to seven when he first started mentioning it, then went back down. Then it spiked up and stayed at like above that the entire time he was talking about the racially charged stuff. <laughs> so it was just too good, but Martin Lucifer. <laughs> Martin Luce. What did you think of that, Frycor? What did you think of him saying Martin Lucifer? I, I, the only other time I've heard, I've heard Martin, the term Martin Lucifer was with the actual like legit uh, German Martin Luther that started the Reformation. 
at the Wittenberg Cathedral. That because because he um because of his views on like the doctrines of well, yeah. or, or his view of like grace and and repentance. Some people have done that because he's call him like a cheap gracer, so they'll call him like Martin Lucifer. But I've never heard Martin Luther King Jr. called Martin Lucifer. I mean, that was yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> that was I think that Martin Luther actually got assassinated by somebody who listened to this guy. For real? Uh, let me look that up. But I think he was killed by somebody who was like in within the same um like within the same circles in terms of like their beliefs. Yeah, James Earl Ray killed him. Um Uh, ta, 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 ta. Let's see what I can find. But yeah, I I, I really wanted to like um, live stream this with people because of just how insane it gets. That got crazy. It it it's like awful. Like, it, like it was just normal conspiracy stuff in the beginning, and then it just hopped straight into some crazy yeah. stuff. So, like, yeah. all right. So here's something interesting. Uh, the dude that basically, um, the dude that made that whole thing, Myron uh, Fagan, lived in Hollywood after moving there from moving there from New York, right? James Earl Ray, after he escaped from prison, right when this recording was made, moved to Hollywood. Oh. oh. <laughs> now look, we're gonna talk about like if we're gonna go off and talk about some conspiracy stuff. Let me talk about some conspiracy stuff, okay? This recording right. was released in 1937. Let me see if there's an actual date for it. There isn't. Okay, so it was... Um, it was made in 1967. Um, let's see here. The person who produced it was Anthony Hilder, um, who lived in Southern California in um, the, the Hollywood area. Myron recorded it in Hollywood. Um, and so James Earl Ray goes to Hollywood in 1967, shortly after this thing gets released, and, and basically supports George Wallace, who was um, super segregationalist and supported George Wallace during his presidential campaign. Um, someone that Myron, I think, I think Myron um, Fagan actually mentions George Wallace positively in the uh, thing. I think I remember hearing that. So anyway, James Earl Ray moves to Hollywood 1967 when these recordings are made. Supports George Wallace, is within the circles that Myron Fagan would have been in, and spent a ton of his time in Los Angeles volunteering for the Wallace campaign headquarters, something Myron Fagan would have been with, within. He had, uh, James Earl Ray actually considered moving to Rhodesia because of the racism, because <laughs> of all the segregation there. Uh, Rhodesia, but Rhodesia basically said, nah, fam, uh, he actually tried to get there um, 
after he assassinated Martin Luther King, but the Rhodesian government said no because they thought what he did was disgusting. So Rhodesia, known for being super racist and segregationalist, told Ray no because they thought what he did to Martin Luther King was terrible. It's like, no, we're not going to accept you. You're too. You're a her terrible person. Ironic. You're not, we're racist, but we're not that kind. Yeah, of like racist. you're 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 a different kind of racist. Yeah, that's interesting. We just spent two out four hours listening to to a, some crazy old man ramble on. Crazy old bag. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, so he assassinated a uh, king. Let me see real quick. Martin Luther's king's initials are milk. <laughs> Milk J. Milk J. We got four people in right now. I still find it funny that a dude said that no one's watching this stream. Honestly, and he deleted it later. But yeah, so he was uh, he was definitely someone who could have been within the circles who um, who Myron Fagan was within. So it's a very big possibility that Myron Fagan constantly saying that. Um, with Ray already being a racist, and then you have Myron Fagan saying that the whole idea of, you know, having no segregation and, you know, treating minorities like people is Satanist, it would easily push him to um, killing Martin Luther. So Myron Fagan might have actually had a hand in the assassination. Probably. I don't know. So... I wouldn't be surprised. If we're going to talk about conspiracies, there's that. On top of that, uh, Ray actually tried to say that he wasn't the one who killed him and said that he did it with other people and that there were other people involved and it was a planned thing. So, go figure. Hmm. And there's actually been studies showing that where he was, there was no way he could have fired the fatal shot and that would have had to come from somewhere else. So if he was within those circles... And Myron Fagan was convinced that Martin Luther was part of this huge plot to bring about the New World Order. It's possible that they could have conspired to have him killed. There's a conspiracy. So if you're going to talk about conspiracy theories that have actual weight to them, there you go. Rather than this crazy Rothschilds thing that's easily debunked when you realize that the whole thing started in 1846 with a crazy Frenchman trying to diss the British. <laughs> so anyway closing thoughts doughboy before we end the stream that was fun you guys want to dunk on another crazy video but like in a shorter amount of time and not four and a half hours yeah I'll have to find one that's crazy uh Frycore closing statement yeah it's it just it's just complete bonkers I mean but but yeah it's kind of like I don't know it it's kind of like the old classical, like, you know, American theme from, like, the 50s. Like, the God bless America type thing. Like, you yeah. know, God's on our side. You know, we're we're just perfect, and all of our causes are, are you know, blessed by God. Like, we go over to go over to Vietnam. Well, God, God destroyed communism, and, you know, civil yeah. rights people are acting up. Well, God bless God bless the whites in our congregation because they're, they're, they're corrupting the system with the Illuminati and stuff like that. It's like... That's just the thing, though. I think they should leave Christianity out of it. Yeah. Because it has nothing to do with Christianity. It it doesn't. It's like Not it, it's all. like no. And and yeah, his his version of Christianity is obviously like bastardized because he doesn't he doesn't see all men created equal. 
So he's, he's bastardized. And, and yeah, that's just the thing. Like, you know, American Christianity is so bastardized. With like, old prosperity gospel and all that other stuff. It's It shouldn't even... It, he shouldn't... He tried to make it a, re a religious thing out of it. And it that, that just went too far. Like, it, it was too far to begin with. It was just completely bonkers. But that Danny statement, that just made it... That just made it too worse. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, well, thanks for joining me on this crazy wild ride with this stream here. Um, definitely sort of a new idea, and I think it'd be kind of cool to do this when I've got some free time. I had some free time today since my flight got canceled, so yeah. Um, I, I guess I'll just end it off with this. Um, one of the things to take away from this, if anyone's going to learn anything, is that it's always important to use these as case studies into how to actually research something and how to, you know, learn uh, there's nuggets of truth in everything, even in something as crackpot as this. Woodrow Wilson sucks. I mean, there are some pretty bad things that go on within government and how rich people can influence our own lives. But the idea of it being a conspiracy for a one world government, there's just no substantial evidence for. Um, but like I said, nuggets of truth in everything. And it's important to recognize those and to do your own research and to formulate your own opinions. Um don't take what I'm saying for granted. Don't take what Frycore is saying for granted. And God, please do not believe anything Doughboy says. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but no, it's it's important to form your own opinions. And don't take some personality on YouTube or the internet or just some random LPs as, as truth. Listen to it. And if you're like, wow, that sounded reasonable, do your own research. So... Yeah, that's my closing thoughts. Um, I hope all of you guys have a great night because it is getting late and I'm going to go to sleep because I've got a lot of stuff going on tomorrow. Um, I hope to do this again. This would be really fun. I'm hopefully going to get a video recorded tomorrow if I've got some time and get it edited and uploaded so we'll have back-to-back -back uploads again um, before I go silent for another freaking six months because I'm very busy right now. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for staying tuned. I always appreciate the support even right now with me being an active and, uh, yeah, you guys stay safe out there. Bye. That was fun.